everyone to a special edition of come on now the podcast by now you have seen our comrade don in his cuddly blanket yesterday give some passionate sensitive approach to fandom and loyalty and happiness what he fails to acknowledge is that he's a Bulls fan because he won six championships in the 90s. He said it. Yeah, he's a, he's a Bulls fan because he won, they won six championships in the 90s. Okay. All right. Okay. So you know what he's getting? He's getting the karma of winning as he grew up, and now he gets to deal with the karma that comes with losing. So now he wants to jump onto the – Minnesota Timberwolves bandwagon in a very sensitive and endearing and heartfelt way. <laughs> but uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm your boy, Rudy Rodriguez Shomad. I have Nick Taylor with me. <clears throat> I know we've been away for about a, a week and a half now. If you can hear my voice, I hope you can hear it. But I'm very hoarse because I had the flu for about 10 days, still getting over it. So I'm <clears throat> dealing with uh, a cough, so I apologize if by the sound of my voice. So I guess you guys can now call me fat, bald, and something else with my voice, whatever you want. But Nick and I are here to chop it up a bit before we get into the conference finals after we had a uh, rather stunning, wow. I don't want to say stunning, but the way it happened is a stunning upset in Game 7 in Denver. So Nick. What are your thoughts of the Rudy Gobert-led Minnesota Timberwolves coming back from 20 down in Denver in the third quarter to knock off the Denver Nuggets um, and advance to play the Dallas Mavericks? So I think they're I think they're going to smoke Dallas. But what are your thoughts? I mean, can't you see what I thought? I've been a Minnesota Timberwolf Timberwolf fan the whole time, baby. Minnesota, baby. I was in those trenches in Minnesota back in 2012 season 13. Y'all see the Viking jersey? I believe the whole time. I jumped on the Ant Edwards bandwagons a while ago when I told y'all he has the most to gain by winning the championship this year. I had been told y'all this team was elite. No, I'm lying. I'm bullshitting, man. I am bullshitting, man. I was utterly flabbergasted of what I seen, man. I I didn't think the, the Timberwolves were going to win after dropping three straight games. They had the series in the chokehold. They were going to Minnesota. Okay, they're going to win at least one game. They're up 3-1, at least going back to Denver. They got the series in the chokehold. They go down. They go to Minnesota. They lose both games. Then they come back and lose the third game. Denver's in the driver's seat. Mike Malone's feeling himself. Murray's feeling himself. They're talking shit again. And then they go after Kendrick Perkins and everybody in the media says that they're quit, they're not going to play anymore, they're done. Oh, Draymond Green. Oh, it wasn't Kendrick. It was Draymond. I'm sorry. Draymond Green. No, no, Draymond. He said that they quit. Well, Ken, you know, Kendrick Perkins, Perkins picked them to win. He's, he still picked them to win. Yeah. Draymond said, look at their body language. They're, they're done. Put a fork in. And that's why you can't go by that, man. Every game is game by game. Whatever we thought was going to happen, ain't happened. Like, it was just the series went the total opposite of what we thought. Denver lost three games at home. What the fuck? The team that has the home court advantage of all home court advantage because they play in Denver with the altitude, they lost three games at home. Rudy, you could have, you could have, you could have thunk it that they would lose three games at home. You picked Minnesota to win the series, but you never would have thought it went the way it went for them to lose. Three games of course, of course not. No, of course what? not. So they up by 15 in the second half of the start to halftime of game six. I mean, game seven, I'm sorry, yesterday. And <laughs> next thing you know, Anthony Edwards keeps believing in his teammates. He drives the ball. He kicks it to, to Matt Daniels. He hit a couple threes. 
Conley comes, he makes a couple shots. Their defense turns up another fucking notch. That's one thing that always we always knew, man. That defense travels, and their defense traveled. It was the, one of the best defensive performances I have seen in a series in a long time. I always come on here and I tell Rudy, man, defense is just so fucking hard to play. And Rudy, like, no, nah, no, nah, you can play defense. These people just don't care. I say, Rudy, no, man, with the screen and roll, with big man being able to shoot the ball from further out, with with uh, with how these guards can handle the ball, it's just harder. And no hand checking is to a minimum to a certain extent. It's just harder. These kids, these players are way more talented. But Minnesota showed us that that shit meant nothing. They guarded everything. They guarded the pick and roll good. They, they guarded Joker well when they had Cat on him. Let's clear that up. When they had Cat on him. Me and Rudy got into a big argument this week about Rudy Gobert. And I said my thing was that Rudy Gobert just can't guard Joker one-on-one. He can't guard him. It's just an ugly, it's a mismatch. And we got into a big old thing. Rudy going to bring up plus and minuses. And I'm saying, well, that's not my point. My point was that when he's on a one-on-one, he gets shellacked. He gets punished. Rudy Gobert, he, pun- he pushes wherever he pushes wherever he want to go. He gets layups and he does, you know, multiple moves. He moves where he want to go. And he, he has his way with him. But they found a way. They put Cat on him. And Cat was tremendous on defense, man. He, he, he held his ground. He didn't get moved often. And then they were able to help with Gobert. And Gobert, the big thing that changed was the, the um, Aaron Gordon wasn't a big factor, even with him getting guarded by him. He didn't hit the big threes. He didn't step up. He didn't do all the things they did to do. And then, Lord have mercy, Michael Gordon. Oh, my Lord. Um, they're, uh, the, the league about to look into that. They're about to look into that. It's, they don't. I don't know if it's a family thing or something that's going on, but the under on him was crazy. For him to be putting up six points and four points and not being a, a factor of somebody who averages damn near what, 18 points a game coming in and not being able to help out Murray or Joker in a big game like that. Wow. That was, or the past three games, he's been nowhere to be seen. I don't know. There's an APB out for Michael Boyd. We're still looking for him. And that was the big, one of the biggest things that happened. Another thing that happened, I'm sorry to keep going so long, Woody, was the Bruce Brown situation. You said that was going to be a big factor. The bench was was not a factor. Bruce Brown was going to be a missing link. And it showed up. Their bench gave five points. Braun was solid the whole series, but they got nothing else from playoff Jackson. They got they didn't even play DeAndre Jordan, which I think they should. They, Mike Malone messed up a little bit by not giving him a couple minutes when they were up, Rudy. When they were up by what they were up to give Joker a little breather. I think it showed later in the game that Joker was dead ass tired. That's the first time we've really seen Joker tired like that. He was out of breath. He couldn't move when anybody came to the basket. They sidestepped him, lay up, lay up, lay up, lay up. He couldn't move. He wasn't. He he, he gave all he could on offense. And he just tired himself out. And that's what one of the biggest factors I've seen. Anthony Edwards stepped up on defense again. He wasn't really scoring on offense, but he trusted his teammates and everybody else did what they had to do. Mars Reed. Cat, shout out to Cat. We gave him so much flat. We gave Gobert flat, and he had damn near all his 13 points or 12 points in the second half. Man, that was big time by everybody on the So, <clears throat> could anyone have predicted that Minnesota would win the first two in Denver, lose the next two at home, <laughs> lose game five in Denver, and then come back and win the series? Probably not. I did expect Minnesota to win game six at home. Mm-hmm. I did I expect them to win by 45. No. I, I think that game six, people have this tendency to <clears throat> act like in the next game, the team that got their ass kicked is going to really come hard and all that stuff. Realistically, if you watch the game, Minnesota was right there in the first quarter. They just couldn't make shots. I didn't think that Denver was playing all that great. I think Minnesota just couldn't make shots. Anthony Edwards was atrocious in the first half yesterday. He couldn't hit a shot. Well, he didn't hit in the second half. Well, much in the second half. uh, He, 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 I think he had two points at halftime. Mm -hmm. Something like, I don't know. Two or four, two or four. four. He he didn't do anything in the first half. All that said, I think that Rudy Gobert caught a lot of freaking unnecessary and unneeded flack. And I don't view basketball the way some people view basketball. Basketball is a team sport. 
this whole thing that if Rudy Gobert's covering him, he's getting smoked. Yeah, he got smoked. He got smoked in many situations when he was being guarded, when he was guarding Joker. And none of the people that were talking nationally seemed to be watching what the shots that Joker was making. I mean, Joker was making very, very difficult shots. He 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 threw some now off the backboard that I don't think anyone can make. Um, does that mean that Gobert could have done a better job? Probably more physical, but he's a little stiff, a little high, so he doesn't he doesn't get that underneath on 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 Joker that other that a guy like Cat can or Nas Reed can. And Nas Reed, Nas Reed blocked shots of of Joker, and remember Anthony Davis couldn't block Joker shots, so. I think that the, it was what I said in the beginning was that they have size. They have enough bodies to put his way. And then there came a point when they would collapse on Joker. And look, Joker and Jamal Murray had 69 points yesterday. <laughs> oh the rest of the team scored 21 points. Michael Porter had two games where he was good and five where he was terrible. <clears throat> Aaron Gordon was terrible for most of the series. KCP was terrible for most of the series. They had no bench. <clears throat> so Ron was solid. Number... he was okay. He, yeah, was, he was okay. He was okay. I mean, he did he did he did he did his job. Mm. But they but when you when you get sixty nine from your two guys and the rest of the team scores twenty one, like that's a problem naturally, obviously. But they got their asses kicked in Minnesota. <clears throat> they scored set... they were held to under a hundred points four times. Wow. In every loss, they scored less than 100. They scored 70 points in game six. 70. This is like some New York Knicks Miami Heat shit from the 90s. Rudy. Like they couldn't score. They scored and 37 points in the second half. They blew a 20 point lead in the third quarter. The Alone. game was literally neck and was nearly knotted in the third quarter. They went out, I think it was a 21 to 3 run. I think, what was it? Minnesota was down by three. <clears throat> going into the fourth, when Rudy Gobert hit that circus shot, it was like, oh my god! Like, but now Gobert, I think he had a, a streak where he scored on possession after possession after possession, and that's humongous because he's not going to score. He's not. He's not expected to score. It's not his job. I think Minnesota showed a lot. They showed a whole lot more than what I saw from OKC against Dallas. Uh, you know, I, I'm rambling a little bit right now, but Anthony Edwards is the face of the league right now. I don't care if they win or not. He's the face of the league. He's the face of the league for a var variety of reasons. One of them is he has a personality. He's fun. He's a, he, he's, er I don't like arrogant, but he's, he's not arrogant. He's confident as shit. And he's, he keeps it real with people. He doesn't, Pussy foot, he doesn't pussyfoot around. He said, yeah, I told them we'd be back in their gym for game seven. He even said, I played like shit. I was trash. But I, but I locked Jamal Murray down in the second half. He took that upon himself because Jamal Murray was cooking them <clears throat> in the first half. <clears throat> he was cooking them. And, and Ant chose to make that his mission to shut Jamal Murray down. He did a very good job of it. He was just taking the ball from him, for Christ's <laughs> sakes. There Conley, were Conley did too. Just yeah. taking the ball, getting dunks. I mean, in that run, Mike Conley hit a three. That made it 75-72. My gosh. Where, I don't know, he pumped it. Dude yeah. flew by him. And it's like he didn't even really shoot it. It was like flick, swish. You're like, oh, my God. Like, it Everything was. Everything went right in the second half. That could go right. But they made it go right by how they started on defense, and their defense got them back in the game, and then they just started and hitting a little shot by shot, shot by shot. McDaniels the was massive. The McDaniels in game six had 21 or 20, and I said before the game to myself, because I was talking to myself, if he busts 20 again tonight, they're going to win. He had 23. He had a great game. And, you know, I, I think it speaks volumes for what these guys are doing. Mike Conley's a tremendous leader because <clears throat> the game he didn't play, they got absolutely killed. Was it game five um, at home? Yep. No, I was in Denver. In Denver? Yeah. You know, Carl Anthony Towns, he's finally, 
He's finally decided to be what Jimmy Butler wanted him to be. And people are going to clown Jimmy Butler if the Timberwolves win this win the championship. And I expect them to win the championship. I think they're the best team left. Um, people are going to clown Jimmy Butler, but that's the guy that Jimmy Butler wanted. The guy that takes it upon himself to buck up, let his nuts drop, and man the fuck up. And he did that. And he did a great job. And, and you know, he's expected to score. He didn't settle for 28 footers when he had the little guy switch on him. He cooked them. It was like almost a jump shot. No, he, take them down low and destroy them. You're too talented. You're too good. Really? And <clears throat> I think, you know, their size, Nas Reed, the last two games, especially game, I mean, game seven, it was fantastic. Because wow. at one point, Cat went out. And Nas Reed, the like lead blew, game one, game one again. The just, lead blew, just like blew up. I, I mean, when 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 Anthony Edwards now did the Timberwolves make some ridiculous mistakes in the last two minutes? God, call a fucking timeout! Like, what are we doing? It's like, do do, do the brain cells stop functioning when mm-hmm. you're up seven? Pressure, pressure, and and, and you pressure just changes. call Change a time. Shit. But why isn't the coach calling timeout? Like, I'm not understanding this. This is now. We saw that in the Knicks Sixers series. What's going on that these coaches are allowing this type of shit to happen? Because that could have changed stuff. Coaches it got, are, it got to five. Coaches are so <clears throat> worried about having their timeouts for the end of the game situation that they don't think that every situation is precious enough to call that timeout. They're like, oh man, don't want to lose it because I might need it later on. But damn it, if you don't you use it. You turn the ball over and is, they scored. When and it's a five point game. When possessions are magnified, that's crazy. It, it's crazy to me. You had two of them. Like, call a timeout. I don't understand it, but I gotta t- like, like they played their asses off. I was. I, I I think they're an excellent team. Their defense goes every. It, listen, 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 folks. This is the shit that I get into with Nick. Rudy Gobert is being crucified, right? He's being killed by national media by the things that he's not doing. But in games three, three. Four and five. He had the best plus minus on the entire team. And I know that what Nick's appro- belief is that, or what he has said, is that that doesn't matter. It's a team stat. Well, why is he getting crucified then when Cats plus minus was minus 44 in that three game stretch? Ants was minus 39 in that three game stretch. The only guy that was within, I mean, Rudy Gobert, when he's on the floor, they're better. They're better. I don't care if he getting if he's getting. So he was getting cooked, and yet they were still better than when he wasn't on the floor. What game? What, what game was it? Was it game three or four? Four. It was four, four right? The close it was game. four because they lost by eight, right? The close game. game four. They sat Rudy Gobert end of the first quarter to about eight minutes to go in the second quarter. So he sat for about seven minutes. In that stretch, they got outscored 21-4. to four. I remember it very clearly because I'm watching this and I'm sitting here saying, when he was on the floor, they were plus nine. When he wasn't on the floor, they were minus 17. That stuff matters. And you know the funny thing is? Yesterday in the post-game interview, Anthony Edwards said all of us were plus on the plus minus in the starting five. He made a, he, he specifically pointed that out. So while people want to dismiss Rudy Gobert, and I am not a Rudy Gobert fan, yes, you I, are. I think I think he's the a, name Rudy. You, I think I, you are. <laughs> I think he, I think he's the biggest fucking whiner. I think he's a bit of a pussy. I, I I just don't think it's fair how he's getting, how you have people like Draymond Green jumping on and and Charles Barkley and who have all these clowns that are sitting here saying sit him. Charles Barkley said sit him in yeah, the second half. half. Yeah, he said it. Half he half. said sit him. Really, Charles? If that man does not play, they lose. They lose. They would have lost that game. I think they overreacted I, to that one play. But he, they, went, he wasn't that great the, in the first but half. But they overreact he, constantly to him because you, you, you want him to do so many different things. I think you, you want, want him to guard Joker, but you want him to get back to contest Aaron Gordon. You want him to. Now, there are some where I'm sitting here saying, bro, you got to contest that. Rudy, I think but it's just he because. Contest, of- but he, he has to. He's, he's a seven foot, a seven foot two, and then he has to DPO, DPOY 
That's but, a match behind him four times. So well, that's why still, people say it doesn't skip. change that he's so, not a great defensive player. He's so still a great defensive player. No, he is a great defensive player. But great defensive that, player. That matchup that he's supposed to go against the person at his position. That, but and, but and Kat's it, a center, too. Kat's technically. He's a center. He's a he was drafted as a center. He's a seven-foot center. No, I can't. Yeah, what, what, what are we doing now? We're going to call seven-footers power forwards because it's cute? He's a center. He was a center at, at Kentucky. Dirt he was a was center a when he was drafted. He was a center. Hey. And now. Go ahead. Hey, go ahead. He was go a center ahead. before Gobert got there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So, I mean, I, like, so that's the point. You have multiple guys that can guard Joker. Yeah. And because you do, what do you have yesterday? Joker's fucking exhausted. Can't breathe. I've never seen because it. Because his coach never took him out for more than a minute in that game. He should have snuck him in. He should have snuck him in. But his teammates couldn't score. Should have snuck him in. 21 points. They scored 21 points besides outside of Jamal Murray and fucking Joker. Man. Like, I, I just think that Rudy Gobert gets an unfair rap, and the dude's not perfect. I think the, 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 the criticism he took for being at his kid's childbirth is insane. It's absolutely nuts. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Completely unfair. Completely unfair. You know, if those guys are shitty fathers, that's on them. <laughs> if they're shitty fathers, that's on them. I get that. Draymond Green talks about everybody. And Draymond Green is the greatest mediocre player of all time. The greatest mediocre player the of all time. The greatest mediocre player of all time. He's the most average player of all time he, that gets more pub and more love because he played with three ben, future Hall of Famers. Ben said that. Two who are who at the time were two of the top five players in the league. The greatest shooter ever, arguably the second or third greatest shooter ever. His entire career was predicated on having guys that he can literally hand the ball off to. What? Because he gets to play four on three because of the best <laughs> shooter of all time. And and he's standing 30 feet from the rim, Steph. So you have a, if you put Draymond Green in any other basketball team, they suck. Yes, he I sucks. I don't know he, why he like, feels that so much about he is, stuff. His, when his he, ego is... When he gets to deal with a four on three uh, every time when he had Steph, when he had Clay Thompson on the left side, and then he probably had another shooter on the right side and Iguodala over there also helping on his team or KD, mm-hmm. and, and Clay was out there on the wings when he got the ball on the four and three. So for him to talk the way he talked, we both agree with, about this with, with Draymond Green that, hey, you benefited from playing with Steph Curry the whole career and Clay Thompson, who's arguably a top five, well, not arguably, he's a top five shooter. He's a top five time. shooter of all, all time, time, for and sure. And then you had another player who was a top 15 player of all the time join that team. Come on now. Yeah. Draymond, pump the brakes a little bit when you go talk about other players and, 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 and the way you talk about talk, Rudy Gobert is better than Draymond Green. At this stage, He right? is absolutely better than Draymond Green. He's absolutely 1,000% better than Draymond Green. When you look at their end of their careers, Draymond Green's a triple single right now. His career. Eight points, seven rebounds, six assists. Yeah. Who the hell would we ever put in a Hall of Fame <laughs> who has those types of bullshit numbers? But this guy talks more shit about people on his podcast. He just said yesterday that if the Celtics don't win the championship, they're a failure. Now, I actually do agree with him That's- in that regard. But who the fuck are you, dude? You were never better than the fifth option. You're talking about Jason Tatum, who I am not a fan of. But Jason Tatum will take your lunch and your cookies, buddy. And Jason Tatum plays with more pressure on him than Draymond Green's ever had to play in his life. Yeah. His life. Yeah. And it's really frustrating listening to people co-sign his bullshit when he's shredding people. Bro, you were a, you're a mediocre fucking player. I got into it today with someone on Facebook. Some young kid who's telling me about basketball. I'm like, bro, I was coaching before you were born. Okay. Like, what are you talking about? I yeah. talked to most. If you made Draymond Green the number one option on any team, they wouldn't win 10 games. They wouldn't win 10 games. He's trash. Outside of his ability to pass the ball, which he's a good passer, but his passing looked better because of who he was playing with. Of course. Put him on the Miami, put him on the Miami Heat right now. What does he look like? Donis Haslam? 
Is anyone talking about putting UD in the Hall of Fame? No. He played Udonis Haslam role and scored less than UD. Just and, rebound, and rebound less than UD. Like, I, I get so frustrated when they bring that dude on, put him on a stupid podcast, put him on TNT. Man, they make, they make that man... God, they, 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 he shoot. can talk, he can talk, with the he, best. Can talk. He, 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 he has no problem taking shits on everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it, it just, it gets, it gets real old to me. I, I think that Rudy Gobert is going to have a much different kind of series against Dallas. This series with Dallas, I would tell you, let's talk about that Dallas thing real quick. The Oklahoma city thunder to me showed Absolute lack of maturity in the game six. Beyond the fact that they were winning by seven going into the fourth and up, I think, 17 in the third, there's sort of massive lack of maturity. And Shea Gilgis Alexander showed way too much trust in his teammates. They're not there. Not yet. Shea passed the ball way too much in the final five minutes. There was a point where I'm sitting here saying he should take every freaking shot down the stretch. Unless it's a layup for somebody else, but you got one to, to check Chet. on the on the alley oop. Mm-hmm. Chet plays way too small. He's seven foot two and he plays like he's six foot six. I, I don't understand. He's not there yet. He's not there. Yeah, I mean he's a he's a he's a, he's a, he's he's a good defender, player. Defender. But he plays too small. Like he he Derek Lively is, is two hundred and twenty pounds. But Derek Lively plays like he's two sixty. He plays big. Rugged. He plays real rugged. He plays like a tough dude. You need Chet to play like a tough dude. I think that fifth foul on the door. I don't think they'll ever have a player like that. You have to get a a, a, a rugged five. Dude. You know who they need right now? Who that? Steven Adams. That's what they need. That, they need, they need, per- they need Steven per- Adams back at OKC. That'll be perfect. If he can be healthy enough to do it. that will be perfect. I, they, Shea is a tremendous player. Absolutely incredible. Do I think he got a little – was it a foul on him? Yes. Yes. Did he get the ball first? Yes. And what kills me is that I saw that exact same call the next day. I think it was the, I don't know if it was the Knicks game or if it was the, uh, the, the Knicks. The, the, it was, the, there was the, the, one of the games on Sunday, yesterday. I no, saw the exact, no, it was, it was the Knicks game. It was the Knicks game. DiVincenzo goes up for a shot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And gets hit square on his arm and they reversed it. It was the exact same play. It was the exact same play. And I'm sitting here saying, how is that not a foul? And that's, this goes back to, do you call something at the end like that? Yeah, you have to. You have to. He hit him on the arm. He but he clearly, he had that ball right there. And it's like he his fought. hand rolled onto his yeah, arm. Yeah, he, he grabbed the fuck out. You know. On the whole side but, of it. But guess what? But P.J. T- PJ Washington had zero points in the fourth quarter. He scored, nine, he scored nine in the last five minutes. But you still can't follow him in that situation. You can't. Let him, make, let him shoot it. He has to make the shot. Make, to the, make shot. the shot. Make has the shot. To, have to. But have that to. was also, to me, another example of immaturity that he was Un- even open like understanding that. Understanding the situation. They, they were playing got, off. like He got out there. All he had to do was just go out there. Just contest. And, yes, you go under, just there, under control. And you contest it. He make it. He make it. He's a 32, 33% shooter. I mean, he's been shooting the ball. If he makes it, then uh, you know what? You, cla- you, you, you you know what? If he makes it, one, you get the ball, and you have a chance to actually inbound the ball. And you, you know what? If you, if you lose, you, you congratulate him. Yeah, they didn't even have a chance to inbound the ball. Well, they got yeah, a because, to he, because he missed on purpose. Yeah, yeah. I and mean, he missed the third one on so purpose. They had to shoot from there. I, yeah. I, I, you know, yeah. but Lou Dort's fifth foul at the end of the third quarter was a terrible foul that he committed. Which cost him dearly when he sat for about five or six minutes. You have to have huge. You have to have huge. You have to have him on the court. Um, but I thought Shea just passed the ball way too much in the last five minutes. Man, he's game. so amazing with that ball, man. He gives you that. Sh- he gives it's you that unreal. shoulder every time. It's so side, good. The side step to the mid range jump shot. It's just sweet basketball that he plays, man. He's um. Man, just call him 30 <clears> points. Pencil him in for 30 points because he's gonna get 30 points. He ain't gonna get 50. Without even trying. Or 60. And I think he can if he wanted to, but he's just so unselfish in the way he plays the game sometimes rather than just being that motherfucker that he passes the ball a little bit too much when nobody can guard him, man. Nobody can stop him. He gets where he wants to on the court. Every time his sweet spot, the mid-range, he gets a little jump shot on the on the three-point shot, the step back, the side, side step, man. It's just, man, goodness gracious, man. He's incredible to me. And I just got, I got, I was disappointed because, first of all, I think, okay, he's better than, Dallas. 
I think they're better, but they are, are immature. And that showed its face in that game at the end, I thought. That's just my opinion. Um, yeah. Props to Luka and Kyrie and P.J. Washington. Washington. I think those two, what also stood out big time in the fourth quarter of that game was Dallas kicked their ass on the glass. Dallas got second chance after second chance lively, after man. second chance. Lively, yeah, for, lively was destroying them. And that's what I'm saying. That, you got that, that big Holden, rebound over Chet, man. Come Chet on. plays small. That's what I was saying. He plays small. It's like you're letting these dudes grab rebounds over you over and over and over again. He, he got moved. He was I don't know moved. how many they grabbed, but it seemed like every second chance they got in the fourth quarter, and that, those were huge. Because I think there was a point where they were up five or six. They got three shots on one possession and made it two or three. Uh, <clears throat> props to Dallas for not quitting. But I thought OKC gave that fucking game away. One thing, one thing I know for sure, if where everybody clamors that Kyrie is <laughs> a top 75 player, which talent-wise, he, he is a top 75 player. If Kyrie... Don't bring his fucking lunch pail to this next series and beat a Batman to Superman like he was for LeBron when they came back from 3-1 to one against the Warriors, then they have no chance. Kyrie has to drop 30 to 35 points per game this series for them to have a chance. He's, he's, he's had to go Dallas, Dallas, Dallas didn't get smoked. He I think Dallas get smoked. Had, but the one thing about it, I know Kyrie, usually when, when it gets tough and the situation with a lot of pressure come on, He's known for stepping up in those situations, except for this, that series <laughs> when they. But that's not why I think they're going to get smoked. I think they're going to get smoked because that size advantage they had is they don't have. They don't have that advantage anymore. But I also think that PJ Washington will be a big factor. If he's hit, he has to hit three. He has to shoot I, it at the yeah. clip that he's that he shot. Bro, he he had he two. Ba- he had what two or three two back to back thirty point games. When he was shooting he the had ball, a twenty point game. He was shooting the ball I, more than Kyrie. Kyrie was shooting like nine times. And PJ Washington, the office. Who's going who, who, who's gonna stop Anthony Edwards? Dallas plays no defense. They still play no defense. Not not what the numbers say. The numbers Ooh. say they play defense. They have 117 points in game six. But I'm talking about, for, talking the most, about? for the most part, the most of the series they didn't get that. They didn't get close to that. What are you talking about? What was the what was the scores in that series? <clears throat> Let's go, go look. look. At it. Let's go look. Go look at it. Dallas has been playing yeah. great defense for the second half of the season. Kyrie's been playing good defense. Something about Kyrie in the playoffs, he actually plays good defense. It was 117, 116. It was 196 that OKC won. Mm-hmm. Um, that was game five. Game four. God, I hate how they do this. I don't, I don't think the Clippers even got to 117, 95 OKC. Let me just go look. Game one, 117 95. Game two, 119 110. Game three, 105 101. Game four, 196. Game four, game five was 104 92. And game, they held them under 100 twice. They got held under 100. Mm-hmm. One, two, twice. They got held under 100 once. And they played good defense against the Clippers. They, <clears> that series, I know well, they definitely held them. Well, it is what it I is. I don't, I don't. Rudy Gobert's matchup with Derek Lively is not the same matchup as the matchup he had against Joker. Yeah, he'll be picking He'll be picking Rose Anthony Towns. Carl Anthony Towns is going to absolutely massacre whoever's guarding him. PJ. PJ Washington can't guard him. He's too small. Um, that's what I'm saying. It has He's to be too small. It, it all comes down to can Luca and Kyrie be those guys and can PJ Washington hit threes? I don't think they have a chance in hell. I think they're going to get absolutely murdered. I think it'll be a four to one series. Cool. I think it'll be a four to one. Series. I could be. I could be wrong. Yeah, no, yeah. But I, th- I, th- I, I, I think Anthony Edwards is so damn good that even when he's not good, he's still damn good. And and he showed that he can defend. Luca can't guard a parked car. Luca spends half his game crying, and it drives me crazy. I it just drives me absolutely crazy watching that man bitch and moan throughout an entire game, mm-hmm. flailing and falling and all that crap that he does. All his histrionics, he gets fouls that are not fouls. He whines about every call and non-call that there is. <clears throat> I, I mean, it's gonna be he, it's, it's gonna be good really, to watch. He's really milking his injuries to make it look like he's dying out there. It's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be good to watch, man. But I just uh, don't think that they're gonna. Have, let me. I'm, I'm curious. Man, <clears throat> let me see. man, I wanted to talk about Anthony Edwards earlier, man, because um, you brought up Jimmy Butler's situation. 
And is that a knock on Jimmy Butler that he couldn't get out of no. out of cat what Anthony Edwards is getting? Is his... That was younger. How much? Well, that was seven years ago. I mean, he was twenty two years old, bro. Anthony Edwards is changing. He's infectious, man. Everybody, but look but at look Kat at Cat is thirty now, right? Look at Cat. I don't think he's that old yet. Look at Cat going into the press conference, man. He used to hide his voice and talk hey. with, and, and and try so, to talk with a. a a deeper voice than he actually really had. Now he's he going has to a very high pitched voice. Now he's going to press conference. He's confident about himself. He's, tw- he's, sitting, he's 28. He's sitting next he's to 28. Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards making him feel good about himself. And that confidence is shows in the game. It, besides the dumb fouls that he continually commits. But, he, he just he, he, but he's 28. When he was playing with Jimmy, he was 21. 22. He was a baby. Yeah. He was very sensitive still. And I think this was like. I mean, I know his mother passed away from COVID around in 20 in 20. This was before he was playing with him before, before that. that, before that. So, you know, Jimmy got to Miami in 20, 21, 20, no, or 19, four years, five years ago. Jimmy played with, that was, we've been now five years with Jimmy. So that means 19. He was with Philly before that in 18. So you're talking about the guy was 22 years old. He was still a baby and he's, and he's had an opportunity to get his ass kicked for six years. Man, and I'm not, I'm not going to take away what Anthony Edwards what, is bringing I think what, to. I think, what, I think what Anthony Edwards has, has done the, is exceptional. I, I think it's exceptional. The confidence that he I, instilled in, in Cat right now, there, you can see it. It's is, a fucking difference. Is, is, Mike Conley, is Mike Conley better than Jeff Teague? As a leader, as a point as guard a player, player. As a player. Before, before younger... Conley, are you yeah. are you really are you really thinking about it? Are you talking about younger Conley? Yeah, I'm. I'm, not, I'm Mike Conley Teague. right now, right? Mike Conley right now is and a better Teague, player than Jeff Teague, Teague ever was. Teague, no, well, well, Jeff Teague was the starting point guard on that team. Teague was pretty good, man. He was good in Indiana. Yes, Minnesota. Jeff Teague, Jeff Teague Mike Conley is gonna see. You want to talk about Hall of Fame players? Mike Conley is ten times the player Draymond Green will ever be. Of course, they'll never talk, and they'll never talk about him going to the Hall of Fame. Because they don't have a championship. It gives a fuck. That's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. but Mike we always Conley said that about as a leader. We always said that great, about Hall of Fame players. A lot of times, it's about but, who you play well, with. Well, that's what's happened now. Because back in the day, it wasn't like that. It's changed now. The Hall of Fame has completely changed its entire demographic to a bunch of mediocre ass fucking role players. Because when I was a kid, mediac mediocre ass role players did not make the Hall of Fame. If Doc Rivers played right now, he'd go in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> If Charlie Ward played in the freaking NBA right now, he'd be in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> if Chris Childs played. John Starks would be in the Hall of Fame. These guys today, they put in 13 points and three they, rebounds if they in the Hall of Fame because they, 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 they played with four other guys that were better than them who the won championship. them a championship. It's a joke. It's, a, it's, it's embarrassing. But I do think that what Anthony Edwards is infectious, um, what they've done in t- Minnesota is that, and this is something that Don mentioned when he did his little um, – heartfelt thing last night. Edwards is on his rookie deal. Carl Anthony Towns just got signed. Nas Reed just got signed. Go for, go. They're going to have this team for a minute. This team is there. Like, they're going to be here for a minute. Anthony Edwards is going to get $400 million. Yes, he should. Like, it, it, what, what we're looking at is, I, I mean, what he's, what Don't he's pulled it. out of what he's pulled out of I'm not saying anything about Michael Jordan. He's no, what, no, no, what, what, what about, he's I you gonna say like they're on the bridge of being a dynasty. They could. They gotta win they, one first. They could. They gotta well, win yeah, one first. Of course they gotta win one first, but are they more talented than than you than than Denver? Yeah. Way more talented. Joker said that. They're way more talented. Joker basically made it seem like they were the underdog. He he made it seem like he said they have they're good every day. Two defensive player of the year. They have two all star superstars. They have a point guard who was a general. And it was just great to see, man. Because for a second, man, I thought we were going to see another um, another white guy with no athleticism hold down another black young super budding superstar coming up in the league. I thought I thought we was on the brink of seeing that again, man. You know who we're talking about here. You no. know who we're talking. About. Larry Derek? Bird keeping down Michael oh. Jordan. I thought we were about to see it. Larry Bird didn't keep down Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was a baby, man. 
Larry, yeah, Bird, was, Larry Bird was also playing with this, Kevin this, McHale and Robert same, Parrish. This and, is basically the same situation. I mean, I, I think I Look think Larry I think Larry Bird being compared to Joker is kind of insulting to Larry Bird. But wow, that's there you go. Because you love Larry Bird. Okay. I love Larry Bird. I also grew up watching Larry Bird, and I tell you right now, I think Larry Bird could come in the NBA if he was twenty eight years old and averaged thirty five and twelve in this in this league today. If people don't recognize nobody even go, people people should go. What are you talking about? Luca averaged thirty five. Yeah, what, so so you say he's a better scorer than Luca? Larry Bird. Yeah. He's a better player than Luke ever was. Is he a better scorer? We're talking about points right now. You said 35 points. Well, I think scoring back then was harder. I don't think scoring today is that hard. I think it's a lot easier. Regular season scoring today is embarrassingly easy. You're seeing it right now, Nick. You're seeing it. You're seeing it. It's happening right in front of your eyes. When teams decide they want to defend, they defend. They defend. Minnesota defended like this all year. We just had, didn't watch it like no, that. No, they defended even better. Of now. course, uh, of course, everybody's taking up a notch. In a, no, they've taken it up. They held the Nuggets to under 100. Held the 70 points. But also, the playoffs is different because you're matched up against one team. <clears> and all I you're doing that. is counter, counter, what counter, counter. Yesterday? What happened with the Knicks and Pacers yesterday? What hey, happened? loser. <laughs> what happened as the well? The Knicks were 130. Yeah, that's what the Pacers do. They score 130. Like, Four. how many? What was the what was the high for the for the the Nuggets in this series? Maybe about 115. They had 115 and 117. So 117 and 115 and 112. That's the three wins. In the losses, 99, 80, 70, 70 <laughs> 90. They locked those motherfuckers down. God damn. They locked them down. They defended the shit out of those guys. When they when when the when was it when the pedal meets the road or whatever rubber meets the road, they locked those dudes down. And if they hadn't sat Goldberg in game three, four, they would have won that game in Minnesota. But that's another topic, you know. Oh, okay. He sh- that twenty-one four run, I will forever hold him. Or, I was watching it. I, I mean, we also have to hold him. I mean, he he didn't play. Hey, good. Like he said, didn't play good the last six minutes plus, of the game. Plus minus. His last matters. six minutes was was a big part of them losing. His he last six free throws, minutes of free throws. Uh, he he didn't miss free, yeah. didn't miss free throws in game six. Game seven. four, four, four. We're talking about four. Well, he was also one of the guys scoring in game four. He was. He actually had 18 in that game, bro. Man, when Rudy Gobert hit that shot, he was yeah. seven for seven. He had 18, 11, two, and one. Like you, you, you. If you, if I ask you before a game, if Rudy Gobert scores 18 and it was 18 and 11, and is seven for seven from the field with two blocks, did you get a great game? Yeah. Is that as good? Of, is that as good an offensive game as you get from that guy? Yeah, you say yes. Yeah, you take I, it in a heartbeat. But I gotta see how you get it. If they're coming down, the point guard doing all the work, and he's just catching lobs. I mean, there's a lot of things that go into it. He's, That's Shaq's entire career. What did you just? That's say? Shaq's career. That his point guard drove and gave him lobs. How many lob? How many alley oops again did Shaq have when he was in his peak? Maybe a couple. Don't do that. Shaq got his buckets from oh, 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 Shaq was doing up and under moves, right? Shaq was had the nice touch. Shaq level. was just running motherfuckers over. Did Shaq you, was running. Did you just Shaq, say, Shaq was Shaq was getting two foot baby hooks? Are you just? Are, yes. Are you saying that Shaq was not scoring the ball like as a dominant center? I, I, no, you I'm, just told I'm, me that I'm, he I'm, caught I'm, all out say, all game I'm, like Rudy Gobert. I'm saying, did I'm you just saying say that, that I'm saying that Shaq was the biggest motherfucker on the planet. Yeah, but and, they threw the ball down Shaq, to him on the and block. Shaq, yes, and he just caught the ball a foot from the rim. Yes, because he worked for that position to get there under the – what you teach a big man to run down the paint and bury the motherfucker, and then we throw the ball to you. How hard and, is how hard was it for Shaq to ever get position? Yes, because he was big and dominant and strong. What he, he worked for it. Go well, Shaq, what, go so you're telling, you're telling, 280, so he can't do it. You're telling – well, first of all, he's not 280. Get the fuck out of here. He's not 280. He's not 280. 260. He's not 280. 260. He might be 260, and Shaq was playing at 350. Um, Shaq Shaq was was doing that when he was 300, 290 in in Orlando. Shaq is a a better player than Gobert. I'm just sitting here telling. What I'm saying is, you're saying you're talking about how he got his points. Does it matter? No. Why does it matter? I'm just telling you that how Shaq. Why does it matter how he got the points? Yeah, it matters a lot. If somebody else is doing all the work, you just reach the. Someone's doing all the work. 
did you watch Aaron Gordon? Aaron Gordon's best games are dunks. Aaron Gordon's best games, he stands in the dunk position no, no. the whole game and dunks the ball. And, and he's hit, not going 12 for 12 from three. He he's getting couple. dunks and layups. He hit a couple. He hit mid-range jump he shots. He hit a couple. Hit. Most of his shots are within three feet of the rim. He had some mid-range shots that game. He had some threes. Come on now. It wasn't all there. I mean, a good majority of it is him working the best baseline. I'm, again, the majority of his points come from the dunker position. Help off of him. He ends up with a, a little dish for a dunk, and he gets credited as if he did something amazing. I can't believe you just said it about Shaq. I what get, did I say? I get the point that you're trying to make. but the I, I grew up watching Shaq. I wasn't, you, I wasn't an adult watching like Shaq. Shaq got his points from lobs and pain, <clears> just <throat> driving the whole time. With Kobe What's driving the most up? iconic play of Shaq's career? Of course, the one against Portland, the lob. Okay. <laughs> Come on now. Don't do that. That's because Shaq's of the situation game. because they were down 3 1 in that series, and that series ended up going to game. Shaq's game, game was dunking the ball. Important they had to lead, and it was an iconic moment because the Lakers I understand. Came because if, that's what Shaq. Yeah, are, you, are you telling me that if Shaq caught the ball eight feet from the rim, that he'd be effective? I'd say that he'll, he'll back eight feet. Yeah, I, he can make a hook from eight feet. He's decent for Really? Eight feet. So he's Kareem now? Eight feet is not that, that far. If you said 12 to 14 feet, okay. 10 to 14 feet, yeah. Eight feet is not that, that far. I know you say you watch YouTube videos on that. I, I suggest you go watch some of Shaq's old shit. No, I actually every, grew up Because every, highlight I, I, every up. highlight I watch of Shaq nowadays is him just dunking on people, I, catching the ball. Yeah, I've watched his. That's I've what made his, him dominant, but that was because he was getting yeah. lobs. That was because he was but backing his skill, down. But, was, his, but his skill was limited. Dude, his skill was always limited. Oh, my his, Lord. You really th- so you think Shaq was skilled offensively? Yes, Shaq was highly skilled offensively. Are you fucking? You're high. You're you high. had amazing touch around the basket. You're he high. Had, he had great feet work. You mean the forty nine percent free throws? You had amazing touch now. Great footwork. Yes, around the basket. He had great footwork. He had amazing. Nick, touch. How hard is it for a man seven one and three fifty to drop the ball from here to here? It's awesome. how hard is that, Rudy? The man had touch around the basket. And I'm not just saying Duncan. He was a little – he wasn't always under the basket. Shaq had amazing touch around the basket. The little fade to the right when he went over his right shoulder and kissed it off the glass he had, he had a little touch. Now, for the free throw line, I don't know what the fuck he did there, but he had amazing touch everywhere else around the basket. He had one of the best touches of big man around the basket. Did you – you said you watched the games, but I'm kind of confused. Yeah, and I watched Shaq my entire life, and all I watched Shaq do is fucking dunk the ball. He made wow. some some little baby hooks from wow. three feet away I don't where know no one could did. guard it. No one could guard it because he was so damn wide that he so, created space. What about his little kiss off the glass jumps, little shot he had? Look, I'm not sitting here saying man can make a shot. I didn't say that. Oh. But if you're going to sit here, let, let me, I'm going to check this right now. How many dunks did Shaq have in his career? We know he's probably top number no, one. No, 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 no. I'm pretty sure he's how, number one. How many does he average in a game? Probably about he four. He had a game. He had a game. He had a season with 381 dunks. Out of how much field goals, Rudy? Really? <laughs> Come he on. Had, he, he had eight games uh, in his career with 10 plus How much field goals did he make that year? 350 dunks. How much field goals did he make that year? Let's go take a look. I'm pretty sure. No, we're going to say it's so probably at least. I'm going to go look. I don't, I, I'm trying to figure out what year it is. I don't know what, see, what year. Let's say. Okay, let's see 10, here. 10 a game. That's 820 field goals. Can you imagine having eight games with 10 plus dunks? <laughs> who has had who, who has had 10? Who who in the last 20 years but, has had but, one game but he, with 10 plus dunks? But but, but what? The, I think we're getting off the topic. I said. We are. I, I, but I, I was sitting here saying that go bear. If I if I told I you go bear at eighteen and eleven, I said you, how he you got take it. it, and you said it depends on how he gets it. No, I said I was. What does it gonna, matter how no, he I'm, gets I'm it? I'm gonna say I'm gonna take it regardless. But I'm saying it's a it's a different variety of how he get it or how he earned it. Now I say Conley's doing all the he work. averaged four point seven dunks per game. That's amazing. But but per your, game, but man. his dunks and Rudy Gobert dunks is different. Rudy gets his kids to other people do all the work. Shaq gets it because he does most of the work. He probably gets one lob a game, maybe two. But the other three dunks is him. He 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 had three thousand eight hundred and thirteen career dunks. Yeah, okay. He got almost eight thousand of his thirty thousand points dunking the ball. That's amazing. That's incredible. But I've just said. But you're gonna tell me. But you're gonna tell me that he didn't dunk the ball. 
No, I did, I did not say that. You know, see, you, and Rudy is good at switching words up because I never said that. I said that he gets his points differently than Gobert because he actually kind of <clears> earns it. Gobert gets the points. He achieves it, but he doesn't earn it. Like Shaq, come on, man. We're not going to do this. Cut it up. Shaq, oh, no. Shaq played today. He averaged 15 dunks a game. I don't know. He couldn't call, guard him. He'll get called for a lot of offensive fouls. So. They couldn't guard him. Well, they, get, foul him before, they foul him before he commits the offensive the same, foul. Same thing would happen. Either you're going to get an offensive foul, you're going to be at the free throw line and shoot 50%. <clears throat> he average around the same amount of points with, with offensive fouls. So you have to change his game a little bit. So now we have the Dallas Mavericks and the Timberwolves. Who do you pick? I'm going How many games? Mavericks in six. You're picking the Mavericks? In six. I'm still in a real special series out of Luka. You're Picking the Mavericks. I'm feeling a special series out of Luka, and I think Kyrie is saving a little bit of juice from last series to pile it up this series. Hey, that's what I'm rolling with. If the Mavericks win this series, it is the best birthday present that they will get in Boston. Because Boston will absolutely destroy Dallas if that happens. I still think Boston's winning this championship. They're not going to beat. They would not beat the Minnesota Timberwolves. I think whoever comes from out out the West, I think, Boston will, will loses be to it, Boston. Well, it all depends on KP. I think they have enough to get past Indiana, like I told you before, to get through the whole playoff series without KP. You're like, oh, KP going to get hurt. He's hurt. Um, you know, they're going to run into some problems. I say, no, they'll be fine. Until the finals, they get KP back. They get their big guy back. They still have Drew. They have Tatum. They have the best player on their team, which is Jalen Brown. And he will carry them to the championship this year. That's why they pay him $60 million a year, because he's the best player on that team. You think Jalen Brown? You think that? I think that we both think that Jalen Brown. I've always had, thought I've, I've thought that Jalen Brown was the best player in way, Boston for the last way five more years. Efficient, way more dependable. You could count on him. If the offense ran through him, I think Boston probably be. A, they probably have a championship by now. They will. They they will. They will never achieve the best. The best team they could be until they run the, run the offense through him. That's my opinion. I've, I've felt that way for years. I'm with you. I still feel that way. You go look at the games that he plays. He goes nine for fifteen for thirty points. Wow. While Tatum gets all the praise for going 11 for 27 for the same amount of points, it's like Tatum is amazing. Look, I'm not saying Tatum's not a great player. I think I don't, I don't think I don't think Tatum's a top 10 player in the NBA. Personally, I don't. We both agree on I, that. I, I I don't think he's a top 10 player. People tell me I'm crazy. Don will disagree with me forever. I've never seen a player get more hype than that guy gets. He's a great he's a great player, but he has massive deficiencies and massive holes in his game. He turns the ball over way too much. Heck, so does Jalen Brown. Yes, <laughs> Jalen Brown can't. Jalen Brown can't dribble to the left. <clears throat> but those two, but those two bit. players can't play off each other. That's why they needed Kirstoff Porzingis. Somehow they keep, yeah. Somehow That's they keep they getting to. The, somehow they keep getting to the conference finals because they're just talented. Yeah, talent. So, no one can argue the talent. One year, and, they, they're they're deep. They're deep. I mean, their starting five is good. Horford still does the old man things. They come out with a couple of Derek White has been fantastic. Man. Like Drew Holiday is still Drew Holiday. The the I mean the kid off the the white dude off the bench, Pritchard, he's a headache. And he's up. like McConnell. He's like McConnell for Indiana. Oh my god, like, TJ. Like two aggravating ass fucking pest dudes. Like I, I really Boston's talent wise, they're very talented, but that that you go, I go, you go, I go, you go, I go. That doesn't win. It doesn't win. Austin, y'all be celebrating y'all 18 championship this year. It's 18, right? Yeah, if they I win, mean, they it have would a, be. I don't count. I only count, <laughs> I only count them as having, having five champion, well, four championships. How? Um, Why? Three with Larry Bird, and then one with, um, and then one with uh, Paul Pierce. All the other ones before in the. 60. That's ho- that's horseshit. Yeah, yeah. So, the, said. so then you don't count five of the Lakers championships, then, right? No, I don't. No, I count. That's bullshit. I, I count a couple of those. What Which are you one? talking about? We're talking they about won, the 60s. They won when they were Minneapolis. When Boston had they 30, literally they 13, literally thirteen they damn Hall of Famers. The Los out of Angeles players. Lakers, bro. Oh. Every every, oh. every team was thirteen Hall of Famers out of fourteen players. They literally <sighs> no, there were only twelve teams. There were only twelve teams. Boston in the league, got four championships, as far as I know. <laughs> they have four championships. Whatever, man. man. 
we're not going back that far for their championships, man. Especially no. when they well, got. I don't. I don't 11, know why you're not. Eleven of them with Bill Russell in that time when the best when when it was just them. They had the best so, team so by do, far. Do you, so do you take away the two Lakers championships in that same time period? Yep. No, they got it against. So they got so it against so, the best team. So, so they do you take against, the? They got it against Boston. Do you take the? Do you take the championship? One. They got it against Boston. No, of course you do. Do you take away their championships when they weren't even in the city of Los Angeles? I'm gonna take away the one when they played. I'm gonna give them the one they beat Boston when they beat that dynamic team. Yeah, when they had all the players. They no how who was gonna beat them? That's who, why who, Bill Russell. Do you, won do you remember who? Do you remember who played on the Lakers? Um. No, no, no. Let's see. Not. Let's go. Do you remember? Jerry, Jerry West. The logo of the league played for the Lakers yeah. that entire time. You know who else played for that team? Yeah, he was at, and, and who, who, he had. Who, 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 who? Was it? Who? Did he get one with Wilt? Wilt Chamberlain was on yeah. that team. Yeah. Two of his players. That's two. They were going against eight other players on Nick, Boston. I suggest you go look at who was on those Lakers they had teams. Eight other players on Boston, man. But we can continue. We can continue. No, 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 no. You say. Blasphemous shit. Like, come on, man. Oh my god. Come, come on, come on, man. Oh, come on. Man. Like you, you 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 can't you can't say blasphemous shit like that and then sit here and act like you didn't just say that. I come said on. what I said. <clears throat> you said what you said. I said what I said. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Come on, Rudy. We, go, we gotta dive into the New York Knicks. Uh, 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 they lost the oh. The, the team that lost the New York Knicks for the championship was the Los Angeles Lakers. Who was on that team? Oh, shit. Wilt Chamberlain was on that team. Pat Riley was on that team. Jerry West was on that team. All right, go. Pat Riley, come on. Gail, Gail Goodridge was on that team. We're talking about Pat Riley, not the coach. They lost to the, the Knicks, beat him. The, the Knicks. Pat and Riley, not the coach. That was the last Knicks championship. That was the last the year before they were sixty nine wins. They won the finals over right. the next the year before that. In the seventies, it got a little better. The sixties, none of those championships <laughs> count. All right, we're gonna count championships. So, from the so 70 on. Let, 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 whatever, I don't do that shit. You win, you win, because <laughs> you're not taking away my Yankees championships from baseball. Suck my dick. But you know what? Even in that, you just want to count the championships from the seventies on. We still got more than everybody else. So fuck y'all. <clears throat> so let's talk about this Knicks situation. I got to I gotta say that – now we're going on an hour already. I got to say that, honestly, the Knicks situation is very depressing for me as a person who wants to watch the best players play. Um, it's re- The Knicks still blew the series. They still blew it because they were up 2-0 and 3-2. They blew the series. But holy crap. I, I mean, man, if I thought the Heat were snake bitten by injuries – who did they have left? If they had magically won yesterday, they would have gotten swept. Why? Because Jalen Brunson couldn't have played. The, it, it worked out for the best, but it worked out for the worst for the league. I mean, I think the New York, if they had all their players and we got that New York-Boston series, I think it would be a highly watched competitive series. Boston very competitive. Would end up, better, Boston would end up winning 4-2, to two, I believe. But it would be it would be a good series that go down to the wire. A lot of the games at the end, but New York was just oh my god! They had OG out there hobbling around. Why even why even play him? I I thought I was tripping. I the, after the first minute he ran back down. Come on! I, I said, did he always run like that? And I said, no, I'm tripping. I said, I would have noticed if he ran like that for real. <laughs> because why is he out there? I guess they try to give it a little bit of confidence to instill in the team, but I don't think that was the right thing to do, man. Did it, you see all the tape on the back of his leg? Yes, Rudy, he was in shambles. He couldn't move. He couldn't do anything left or right. So I don't know who gave them the okay to play him in that situation because clearly if you watched him in practice, he couldn't have moved better than he moved on game day. Because on game day, I know you shoot up with a little bit of little extra things, a little Tylenol, a little Toradol, a little bit of everything to get you going through that game, you get massaged up. So if he was like that on game day, I can only imagine what he looked like in warm-ups or the day before. There's no way he should have been out there playing that game. But what else did they have? They had no choice. But, hey, but, but the Indiana Pacers, literally everybody on the team shot over 50% except for Obi Toppin. Everybody shot over 50%. You can't beat a team like that. TJ McConnell, I don't know. He has been amazing his whole career. Every time he used to play the Miami Heat, 
He's up there with Jamal Crawford, Ben Gordon, and Miami Heat killers. He gives everybody a fit. I don't know why he's not a starter in the league. Why is he just somebody that he just sees as a, as a backup, come off the bench, a spark player? He gets to the, his spot just like Shea, like Shea does. He gets to the mid range and he makes it every time. He doesn't shoot anything more than 17 feet. He gets layups. Nobody can stop the man. He's a pest on defense. And Indiana just took their time and just dog walked him, walked him, walked him down. Because at the end of the day, New York just wasn't going to have enough. Brunson was out there doing the best he can. He was given 40, 35, 30 a night. And he just literally ran out of gas until his hand just finally gave up. Because how much can you ask from the man? I put, man, Bruss is a top seven player now. I, I'm firmly a believer. I give the man all credit. But to see the obnoxious New York Knicks fans I lose that me. series, man. Orange and I blue thought, cries. Orange and blue cries, it, man. You, you know what bugs me about the Knicks? What really bugs me is it's that they treat these games like they're the championship. It is and their championship. It's 1974. No. I don't give a shit. It's their championship. It's the, the, this need to show every player who played 20 years ago, 25 years ago oh my. in the stands. It's, it's ridiculous. John Stark, the trail speed it's, game, it's, game, Stark. it's game seven of the conference semifinals. If I see Walt Frazier one more time. And, and, then, and then the nonsense with Stephen A. Smith, where they show him walking in the arena as if he matters. He's about to play. Like, like he's gonna play the game. It's embarrassing. That's all he ESPN, got. Left. ESPN and ABC running this crap with Stephen A. Smith. I swear to God, that man really believes that he's like some hot shit. He really you believes that he like he's different. some hot shit. Like you can't tell that man nothing. And they and they and they blow his brains out with the like this like they like they they blow his ego even more than it already is and. Videotape of him walking into the arena <laughs> with his Louis Vuitton bag over his white cream suit. Oh my god! Like, are you fucking kidding me? That's embarrassing. It it, it almost becomes a shtick of an and and an, an, a meme watching this crap because I, I grew up on a different form of journalism. Like, how can you put this man on coverage of the game when he's literally cheerleading the, during the game? I think it's, it's so unprofessional. I think you have to accept that, Rudy. You gotta let that go. No, that's, I that's, don't. That's what it is nowadays, man. Buy it. You know what? There are gonna Buy be it. fans of teams, so everybody that well, doesn't. None of those. You, well, you well, never let me, should be. Let me, you never let should, me say. You never should let talk me, about the team that you root for. Eventually, not if you're work. Not if you're working. So every game you gotta. You, not if you're working, or you gotta hold it in that you root for that team. If you're working, I think we are accepting more if, of if, people being human I, beings. I, now. But see, that's BC. You're not a. You don't. You don't I, have a I, background I get, in I this. Get, I get what you're saying. It's it's, it's, it's massively uh, disrespectful. A lot to of the things profession. have changed now, but I think we're accepting more of people being human beings and being fans of things <clears> and, <throat> and what they like. Charles Barkley admits he's a Suns fan. He yeah. admits he's a Sixers fan because he played for. Them. Yeah. I'm sorry, he played for them. Yeah. He lives in Phoenix. Do you ever see him cheerleading the way you see Stephen A. Smith cheerleading? No. Do you ever see Shaq cheerleading the Lakers? No. You don't see that. They're covering this shit too. They're not cheerleading. He's a, it, it's it, to me because I have a background in it. It bothers me because if he wants to go cheer, sit on the sit in the stands. I don't want to see you on the mic. I don't want to hear your voice. I don't want to listen to the. Their, their, their show where they're giggling, shits and giggles while you're cheerleading for a team. It's kind of, it's embarrassing. Like it's a profession. Have respect for it. And ABC running it as if he's more important than Miles Turner or Dante DiVincenzo. Like, what are we doing? I, I, I don't know. I, I it, it just it drives me crazy because I think that's one. It's one thing to have him on first take doing it. Mm -hmm. First take is not a journalism show. We know what first it's, take is. Entertainment. He's covering the game. He's covering the game. How can I take you seriously? Well, obviously, I can't. But I, I think it's massively unprofessional. And if you're gonna be at the game and you want to go to the game, go. We already know they're not buying tickets. 
most of those guys that are there getting their tickets for free because there's some big money person who has those tickets. And I don't know if you know this, you might. The, the reps will call the owners of those tickets and see if they're willing to give them away. Because you know that John Starks ain't paying $5,000 for a ticket to sit courtside. Why does, does that he even have five? Does he even have $5,000? I don't know. <laughs> Why was John Starks being showed every time and running on the court? Every freaking play, it's, something it's, happened. It's a joke, John man. Starks, we got Latrell Sprewell, and I love Latrell Sprewell. I was yeah. a Knicks fan because of the, Larry Latrell. Johnson, Larry Johnson, Latrell Sprewell, Amari Stoudemire, uh, uh, Patrick Mello, Ewing. I mean, my Walt God. Frazier, and they show him after Lord every have mercy. play. And that's and you why know what? we are sick of New York and their fan base and everything that they stand I for. Wanted, I wanted... Orange I will and blue, confess. Orange and blue I will cries. confess. Orange and blue cries, man. That's I, what, I will, not that orange and blue sky uh, shit. Orange and blue cries. We're done with I, it. I will confess that I wanted Jalen Brunson to win. That's I, I do feel... I wanted I, him to win. He, he, I am a fan of him. I, I, I will confess it. I, and I hate the Knicks, but I wanted him to win. That's true. Because, I, because that guy is so damn tough. Good. Oh, my God. And the second he broke his hand, I they said so. he wasn't coming back in. I was like, you know what? Fuck all these Knicks fans, because I, I can't wait to watch them cry on Facebook and, and, and bitch and moan about how they were hurt. I'm like, you know what? I, had a, I have a buddy of mine who's a Knicks fan, and he sits here, and his, in, his post on Facebook is talking about the Miami Heat. Why are you talking about the Heat? You're talking about the Heat because, oh, you're assuming that the Pacers fans are now our, our Heat fans, or as he calls them, the meat. He mm -hmm. said, well, you know what? If Jalen Brunson did not play, Versus the Sixers, the Sixers would have swept them with a broken Joel Embiid. The Sixers would have swept the Knicks if Jalen Brunson did not play in that series. So comparing Brunson to Jimmy Butler, we didn't have Jimmy Butler in the playoffs. If Jalen Brunson does not play, they don't win a game versus the Sixers. That guy is that good. He's that important. Man, he's great. And I think we learned about Dante DiVincenzo. Oh, my gosh. He can't guard a parked car because his defense was so bad. He was solid. Defensively, he was, defensively, he was so bad. He caused a few turn. He was solid on defense, man. He's running around screens. He's watching, doing him, watching him chase guys from behind because he's playing improper in terms of positioning. No, because he's trying to fight over the screen. So they got, they to, within, the they got to within six. And he was chasing from mid court. Because go back and, if you want to go back and watch it, no, because he, he made it personal. I, he made it personal against Halliburton, so he tried fuck to fuck personal. <laughs> play smart because they got to within six. He tried to tire out. He tried, but he's supposed to be the guy that's supposed to be tiring out players, the superstars. But but he showed he can score. When, when Jalen Brunson goes out, he becomes the one A. <laughs> no, he, he showed he can score. Oh man, he scores. Him and Alex, he Alex, Alex can Burks always can score. <laughs> yeah, he he always can score, but he can't play like a defense either, um, which is probably why he doesn't play very much until they no, have three, he, four yeah. fifths of their team on the bench. He hasn't been injuries. scoring that well this year, but he's a no scorer. So you know, but you know, I think that the Pacers are going to get mollywopped by the Celtics, four to one. You know, I won't say you know, I won't say a sweep because I presume that the Celtics will lose game two at home. Um, <laughs> yes, because they. That's seem to completely shit the bed in game two on their home court. And then they it's go so out. weird. You mentioned the home court earlier again about Denver. You mentioned that home court. The whole playoff. And there was a video I saw pop up. I think it was like in some, like it was like Serbia or some country over there where you have the fans. It looked like a soccer game for a basketball game beyond the fireworks that are going on in the stands. And that's what I said a few weeks ago. Home court advantage in professional basketball doesn't exist anymore. It doesn't matter. It might on certain nights, but overall, the Denver Nuggets lost three times on their home court. I'm, the Boston Celtics keep losing at home in the playoffs. Denver has home the court. Knicks, the Knicks lost game seven. Game seven so, on their home floor. So I'm actually be objective about that. The Knicks shouldn't even... They were down too bad. OKC won one game at home in the playoffs, in the, in the, in the Dallas team series. Yeah. One game. The home court advantage was not home court advantage. It showed also Denver actually have home court advantage. That's what they do. They don't lose there, but they lost. That just shows how good Minnesota is. But what I mean by home court, I don't mean like they no, have I home court because they play I, in Altus. I'm talking about 
the, the vile, fan. the fan, the vile fan, does not exist in NBA anymore. Well, they took the it away. The vile fan is the vile fan is prohibited from being a vile fan. Well, between between LeBron that's James, what they, LeBron James and Russell Westbrook getting every fan thrown out the game. You can't even have that anymore. Fruit, fruit, fruit cakes. And the thing is, what kills me about Russell Westbrook is that Russell Westbrook probably played through worse shit in the park in Compton. Like he played through gunshots across the street while shooting baskets so, and probably kept shooting. I, I'm being obviously, I'm being yeah, sarcastic. To the situation. But it's like you went through Compton way worse be hard. playing in the park. And yet you come to the NBA and you're so sensitive about words. We talked about it a couple weeks ago. You talked about it as well. It's it's like I miss home court advantage. I miss it. like Because it's almost like it, it actually gives these guys a reason to not play in the regular season. Besides the fact that now they're being penalized from getting any awards. But outside of that. And what's more important, being and, healthy or having home court? Also, also, I mean, they added the <clears> um, playing game, which kind of. I hate that. I wish they'd get rid of that. I hate it. <laughs> I hated it when they did it. I still hate it. And I don't hate it. And I don't hate it because the Heat lost. I don't hate it because that. I think it. De- I think it defeats the purpose of regular season. I think it defeats the purpose. Well, I think I you like, actually, you actually have. Think about this. I like the element this. of the, the, the team three, four, five. Are, 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 are worried about not being the sixth seed or the Nick, let me ask you, let, let's, seed. let's take a look right here. The Heat finished at 46 and 36. Yeah. They're 10 games above 500. Mm-hmm. The team that they played yeah, that's, that was, was 39 and 43. That only happens. How the, remember what they did. It. They did it because of the, of the, of the bubble. And then they made it seem like, oh, well, you know, if they're within a game or two, these fuckers are seven games out. I think it's, that's only in the East. In the West, it's not like that. But, 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 but then, in the West, tell me the rat race dog fight you would have for the 8 seed. It would have been crazy. With Pel- the Pelicans at 49 wins. I'm sorry. The Pelicans should have been the 7 seed. Yeah. The Lakers, the Kings, and the Warriors with 46, 46, and 47. Like, I don't want to see a play, and you just defeated the whole purpose of why there's a regular season. I don't understand it. Half the more than half the league already gets into the playoffs. What are we doing? Like this is what I'm I'm more traditional. I think you earn your shit during the season. You don't get to be a fuck up for 82 and then earn it by being a 10 seed. Like I think if the Warriors had advanced, it would be ridiculous. Then how do you make the how do you make the regular season a little bit more competitive? Then? Well, it was just by that rule. What, that what we do you did. mean? Why wouldn't it be competitive? Because you want to make the games. playoffs. Because well, we can make it as eight seed. But that's what it always was. Why all of a sudden did we decide to change it? Well, because of COVID? Because there were a couple of teams that finished the game out? I think it just, they it just, felt like it was unfair? I think it, it, it just puts the it, emphasis on the teams <clears> like six through four of having a fight at the end of the season not to be in a playing game. Why should they have to fight to we, not be stuck in some bullshit playing scenario? Well, I think it's just the scenario of making it more competitive they, throughout the regular they're season playing because it, they got they're, to a point. Where people was just sitting up, but then they added the rule, which I think also matters well, now because now people are worried about their pockets, they're, and that's the they're, ultimate. They're, that's yeah, the they're all pocket thing. watching. That's the ultimate thing. Once you start taking money away from people's pockets, because I can't make all team <laughs> first, first all team, second all team, I can't get my MVP awards. Good. Now, how are people gonna be like shit? Good. I gotta. They play, should. I gotta play these sixty games because you should be playing at least seventy five percent of the game. Why can't we play eighty percent of the game? It should be at least eighty percent. Why well, that's what it is. It's, it's, 70, it's 79 point something percent why can't to we play, play 65. Why can't we play 80% of the games? Why can't we do that? I agree with you. You love the there sport. This is what we do. We get paid millions of dollars to have fun and be competitive. I don't I don't see why we can't I, be competitive the, the, throughout the whole season. You'd only get so much years of your body being able to do this. So you got to take advantage of your body being able to do it at a high level. Because you've got about 10, 8 years of your body being Great to be I, a, a I, champion. I will tell you this. The Minnesota Timberwolves, as an example, better not think for a second 
what Dan Marino was probably thinking in 1985. Oh, that we're going to be here forever. That we're going to be here every year. <laughs> because you don't know what can happen. So while I'll sit here and say that, yes, the T-Wolves could become a dynasty because of how they're constructed right now, which is basically how the Warriors became a dynasty. Remember, Steph took a shit contract for four years for $44 million because he was constantly hurting his foot. And because he, was, he took that shitty deal, because he was always hurt initially, they were able to bring dudes in and build a team. <clears throat> and then bringing guys like Iguodala, um, Livingston, later on Kevin Durant. Barbosa. Because of, huh? Barbosa. All these guys, because Steph's contract was so friendly to the team. You know, they, the Timberwolves have that right now. But what if Anthony Edwards breaks his foot, tears his knee up? I'm not wishing that on him. But don't come out here and think that, you gotta get oh, it. we're going to be here every year. You gotta strike, I hate when you got to strike when the iron's hot. you got to win. Win when you can win. Because you don't know when your next chance will be. Yeah, you assume, but you can't assume because and, injuries happen. And you don't know when the next <clears throat> player is going to join somebody else in another team don't. Forms that's just good enough. To compete with you, like um, I don't know who the hell who the hell's the first pick in the draft. I know Atlanta has it somehow. Atlanta, the draft this year is complete trash. I, I, I think the draft is so damn bad. Um, but you have a draft where you probably can't name three Americans from college in the top fifteen, outside of Dalton Connect and Donovan Klingon. Um. You probably can't name you. I don't. I can't name very many. I have no idea who this guy Alex Sar is. No idea. I know he's French. Like, but beyond that, what the hell do we know about him? Nothing. Nothing. Like these drafts are no longer producing players that I think are going to be in, in, immediately effective because they're all so damn young. It's funny we eliminated the the senior from high school to the NBA, but we invite the 17-year-old from Europe, the 18-year-old from Europe. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's like, going on. I don't, I, don't even, I don't know these players, actually. So, uh. I, got, I have no idea who those guys are. If you go look at any mock draft, I mean, the one player that we all know who shouldn't be drafted is... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, don't you do it. Don't you say it. Really? Don't you, you kidding? I'm drafting Bronny. We can we, we can go there all day. Bronny, LeBron James's son is not good enough. I think either. we're saving that for. We need we need to stop this shit. We're saving. We need that to for... stop this shit. Save it for what? We don't even know if he's if Don's <laughs> available on Wednesday. He okay. said he might not be available. I, I I. His father has created. But I'm leaving the topic. Who do you have in the damn uh, Celtics? We said Celtics and, and, and Pacers. I got Celtics in five, and then I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take the Timberwolves in six. Celtics of five, mm. yeah. Mavs in six. All right. The NBA Combine. There are guys, it's an invitation, right? Yeah. You have to be invited, right? Mm -hmm. How many guys that average four points a game in college get invited to the NBA Combine? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ain't that player from, that player from Kentucky? How many players... That average four points a game in college get invited to the NBA combine. What's, I'm asking you. What's the difference? I'm asking you. What's the difference between four and six? A couple points. Just a jump shot. <clears throat> again, I'm going to ask you again. Okay. How many players who average 4.8 points per game as a freshman get invited on 27% shooting from three? How many players is LeBron James son? Yeah. Exactly. So you just proved my point. Yeah. It's embarrassing. Well, it's embarrassing. Well, that's the way the world I know how that's the way I know the world I know how athletic look, I've watched him play. So I don't know how much you've actually watched him play. I watch, I've been watching him play for years. So so I, I, I watch high school basketball. So when it comes down to that, it, it happens. Look at Thomas. Look at, look at no, no, it doesn't. A lot, no, a lot of no, it people doesn't. make it in the league or make it somewhere Nick, or you make it in life because of who oh, you know. are, are you are you criticizing the, the, the MVP Thanasis Antetokounmpo now? <laughs> Are you criticizing him now? Cut it out. The man that wouldn't average four points in the European League right now? Yeah. He's trash. He has no business in the NBA. It's an insult to every player in the NBA right now that that dude's in the NBA. 
It's insulting. Because it's about it's who insulting. you know sometimes in this world. Right. That's, that's what happens. It's been like that in the Was he, was he drafted? Why, does, was, why, was, why, was, why only when it comes to the NBA oh, or in professional sports is this mm. when it, this is where we draw the line? It's always been happening. What it do you mean draw the what are you, what, what, are you, what are you comparing it to? To everything else that happens in the Nick, world. If you're my dad, if you're my father, yeah. if you're my father, obviously that's not possible. But if you're my father and you're a lawyer, you have a law firm, mm -hmm. what do I have to do to work in your law firm as a lawyer? You have to go get your degree. I got to go to four years of law school, three or four years of law school. Yeah. I got to pass the bar. Yeah. So there are requirements that allow me to work for you. Yeah. So work with you. Well, the requirements. There are no requirements that are, prevent are preventing him. There's no requirement. He LeBron passed, James he passed, Jr. obviously passing the requirement. That he, there's that no he, requirement. He could dribble no the ball. Nick, Nick, he could shoot Nick, a ball. Nick, he Nick, could run up and down Nick, the court. How many, guys go, how many guys are listed at six foot four for four years and come in and, and get measured out six one and a half? Not many. A couple people get a He couple. measured out two and a half inches shorter than he's been listed since he was a junior in high school. I was 5'11 in college. I'm 5'9, baby. <laughs> Nick, you're not playing fucking in the NBA. Uh, but I'm just did you saying. Get invited, did you get invited to the NBA Combine? No. I, 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 wasn't, good, I wasn't good enough. And he is? Uh, yeah, he's way better no, than me. No, he's not. No, he's... Is he better than you? I don't know if he's better than you. Yeah, he's way he, better. But he's definitely not... But he's definitely not... He, he, he's not a starter in college. He wasn't a starter on a bad college team. And I don't want to hear about the, the medical shit. I don't want to hear about it. It's a factor. It doesn't matter. How was it a factor? Because I was in a factor. The man was he a played, playing basketball for a few. He played 20 minutes a game. How is it a factor that you can't shoot when you're playing 20 minutes a game? And I, I mean, look, I watched the bullshit. I watched it. They, did you watch me watch? I know Donald was going crazy. Every time they switched on his ass, he's a switching nightmare. He got cooked. He got cooked on every switch. He cannot dribble. You're a better point guard than him, Nick. He, he handled the ball. You're a better point guard than him, Nick. He handled the ball him, decently. But is, that, is that what it takes to the NBA now? Oh, he handled it decently? You told me Jalen Brown can't even dribble left. So. He can't, but he's 6'8". So if he... He's 6'8", and he shoots 48% from the field. Yeah, that's true. So we're sitting here comparing an apple to an orange. I'm not saying that this young man cannot play in the NBA at some point. I did say to you, I think he's cat. I said yeah, you said out. he's capped. You said I a, think he's you capped. You said an 18, 19-year-old is capped of I think his he's ability capped. of playing. I think he's capped in terms of, what I mean by capped is I think he's capped in terms of he's not going to become a superstar. Okay, we're not saying he has he, to become no, a, but I think we, we all understand that we he's going to be a role player. That's what he's he no, already. No, no he, we do not. He, no, he, we he, do no, he, I've listened no. to guys on television he, he, who are paid. By Ron, ESPN, to, and, and are sitting here saying that he could be a star in the league. No, 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 nobody. Are you I don't, crazy? I don't think anybody's drunk enough Bullshit. to say that. Bullshit. Anybody's drunk enough to say that. He's a he brawler. He already, Gil's he, Arena, you know, the only person that speaks and says that it's bullshit is Rashad McCants. Because the rest of those dudes suck him off. I think Rashad Brandon McCants. Brandon Jennings. Huh? Rashad McCants went to a whole other level with it. I think he could play. I no, he, he was a thousand percent right. I think he could play, man. Brandon Jennings actually had the audacity to compare himself to Bronny. No. Brandon no. Jennings was the number one player I, in America I, I think, coming out of high school. I think what he could live up to is what he said. Uh, Davion White. I mean, Davion Mitchell. Get the fuck out of uh, here. Uh, Derek White. I think that's something that... That's, I think, Derek I, White? I think that's his ceiling. Derek White? I think that's his ceiling. Of reaching something like that, Derek White, somebody who could defend and somebody who could hit hit open shots. Nick, he's six one. He's uh, six one. How tall is Derek White? Derek White, that, oh, he's like six four. Right. He's six one, Nick. Davion Mitchell he, is he, not that tall. He, he, Nick, he do can, we draft? Do we draft six one tweeners? Pat Beverly. He didn't get drafted. But. Pat Beverly's a fucking point guard. Pat Beverly's a point guard. Pat Beverly is a defender. Pat Beverly is a point guard. And Pat Beverly did not have his daddy get him into the NBA. He earned it. He earned it. And I don't like Patrick Beverly. Because now they're rumoring him to be coming back to the Heat. Which, hell no. Hell no. But what are we... But, but, this, but this nonsense 
where we pushing this fake narrative. <clears throat> it's very frustrating to me. It, it's very frustrating to me. Man. Man, I'm why? Because I Nick, no, because, no, no, I didn't because say, I don't uh, say why. I just said I'm, because the people that are talking never saw him play one second of high school basketball. And if I can watch you play in high school and you're not dominating, you're not dominating in high school. How are you in the NBA? How are you getting workouts as a 19 year old who's played one college season on the, one of the worst teams in the country? You didn't start. So is that, you didn't start. Is that stop them from evaluating talent. Let's see him. Let's check Nick, him out. He wouldn't. It's an invitation only thing. You can't just show up at the combine. He's Nick, LeBron's son. I'm 40, let's, let's, I'm let's 46. We know that. I'm 46. A, I want my invite next year. Can you? I want my invite. I'll can work you? on my jump shot. <laughs> because you know what? They used that stupid jump shot drill that he did. We made 19 to 25. Yes. You watch that drill, right? Yeah. He literally jogs from spot to spot. He jogged. It's still 25 He's shots. Jogging. Great. Great. Uh, and, and and he shot 27% in college. And a lot, of people, shoot, a lot of people shoot bad in college and they could transform. And, and, and he has a – his form is pretty. It's a pretty looking jump shot. Great. It's Anyone, a pretty can make a jump, anyone can make a jump shot when they're wide open. We know this by now. He plays basketball. I didn't say he's a terrible player. I didn't say that. You just say he needs another year. I'm or saying two. he's not deserving of being the NBA right now. Well, and the and the fact of the matter is they push a narrative. He he measures two and a half inches shorter. He's six one and a half. He's explosive. Two ten. He should have been playing in the NFL. He should be playing in college football. He's explosive. No, he's tr- very explosive. He can jump through the roof. He can jump through the roof. Can that make up for his Does size? that make you an NBA player? Can that make up for his size? I'm just saying. Can he ja, block? No. Ja, ja Morant's 6'1". John ja Morant's point guard. <laughs> John ja Morant dribbles circles around him. Are you really okay. comparing the two? So if I can have a LeBron who handles Are the ball. Are you comparing the two? Are you can, comparing so he can, Ronnie on, James so he, to John ja Morant? Can he defend point guards? Nick. No, I'm saying so. If I have somebody, Kenny, I don't. I don't know. It depends on my team. I, I don't know because I watched him play in high school, it, and I thought he was very mediocre. It depends on my Nick, team. I, 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 you, I know you think I'm a horrible evaluator of talent. No, I don't I say know, that. I, I don't. No, I don't, you, you say it privately. No, I don't I say. Watched, it. I don't say. I've watched. I've watched enough high school I, basketball I just players. Don't agree with certain things, but <clears> I don't say you're well, horrible. I know you know I, your scores. I know you're Johnny, very knowledgeable. Johnny Johnny Flynn, remember him? Yeah, of course, Syracuse. That's my years. Johnny Flynn was 5'11", six foot tall. Mm-hmm. Or I think maybe he was a little taller than that. Johnny Flynn was six feet. Johnny Flynn. Let me see how tall. Six feet. Six foot tall. Yeah. Johnny Flynn, we played him in New York. That dude was unbelievable. We played his AAU team. Watching that guy play, it was like lightning. He's six foot and he was dunking the ball too. Just like Bronny, dunking the ball. Incredible. Now I know his NBA career flamed out, but Johnny Flynn was a better is a way better player than Bronny James. Way better player. Way, way better. Like when I when I look at a guy who's six foot, six one, you got to be special. You gotta be this special guy. Like, the, the, Chris Paul is special. AI, special. It ultimately, do, it ultimately These comes guys down. Are special. It, it ultimately, How many 6 it comes 1 down. guards do we have come off our bench for the Heat? How many 6 1 guards do you have come off the bench on any team? Oh, we had Eddie House. I'm asking. I don't, I, I don't know off Eddie the top Ho- of my head. Eddie House. Yeah, and what was his career? He was a shooting guard. He was a shooting guard. So, yeah, and Ronnie can't be that. I mean, Eddie House was a motherfucking tremendous shooter. Now, Eddie House in college was a was tremendous shooter. No. A gunner. So can Bronny be? See, that's what I'm saying. Like you're comparing. Like no, we're going to compare I'm a saying, guy. I'm just saying by his form, can he be a three point shooter? And can he be a better defender than Eddie House? But can he? I guess he could. But I'm talking about right now. Right now, the NBA is not a a, a, a developmental ground. There's not a team that's going to draft him. 
Mark it down. If it's not the Lakers, no one will draft him. Shit. And I'll bet money on that. Shit. Nobody will draft him. He's getting drafted. Dude, bro, his ranking He's getting drafted. jumped from 98 to 54 after the combine. He did something, right? You think they just put him up there for no reason? <laughs> Come on, man. That's pay. That's, uh, that's, that's payola. Wait, so who, that's Le- payola. LeBron paid him? The ranking system? Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> oh Nick, Nick, Nick. No, real shit, real shit. And, I, and I'm not trying to shit on this dude. Yeah, I'm yeah. really not. Like but I, I, but I, I've lost respect for the entire system. If someone who averages four points in, co- in college on one of the worst teams in the country is sitting here being really, truly considered to be a draft What pick. did the kid from, from Kentucky average? I don't even know what kid you're talking about. Uh, because the kids from Kentucky right now, Rob Dillingham and Reed Shepard, run circles around Bronny James. Let me see. Let me see what the kids from. Boom. <clears throat> oh, I ain't got time to see. I forgot where the kid was from. Bro. Damn. What, and and the reality is, lottery picks and and guaranteed first round picks don't go to the combine. So this is like the rat race of the lower level player. This is the lower level college player. There's no international guys at the combine, is there? I don't think so. Uh, but I can I tell would, you this. Not. I watch. I don't know. I'm, I I don't know. I I I didn't. I watched Sierra Canyon play. Let me see. He wasn't. Bro, I I've watched so much high school basketball. Probably more more than you watched. You played. Probably more than you watched because you play, but you were playing. I watched as a journalist, as someone evaluating, because I used to sell scouting reports to colleges. I don't know if you knew that or not. Mm-hmm. You told Did me. you know that? I think you told me. I, so I used to sell scouting reports. Division one colleges would pay me for scouting reports. So people that don't want to believe it, most of these college coaches don't have any fucking idea. They rely on services to provide them information. My teams played Greg Oden. We played Mike Conley. We played Mike Conley in high school. We played Eric. We played Eric Gordon in high school. The same team. Daquan uh, Cook. Cook. Daquan Cook. All those guys were on the same damn team. We played Julie. We played JJ Hickson. We played Ty Lawson when I was coaching with the Miami Tropics. We played Kevin Durant. We played um, those dude that went to Kansas, Julius something, the motherfucker. We played them white dudes out of Washington, um, Spencer Hawes and um, Kyle Singler mm-hmm. went to Duke or whatever. Like we, pl- I, I watched these guys play when they were in high school. These guys were unbelievable ball players. Look, there was a player in Orlando. Like I mean, if you remember. I didn't like him very much because I didn't think – I thought there was way too much where he's always looking into the crowd. But Darius Washington was a motherfucker. Like Darius Washington, I got into it with his dad because I criticized him because, you know what, I'm sorry. I'm criticizing you because the reality is you're a public figure and you get criticized. But Darius Washington was a superstar, man. To miss free throws at Louisville or whatever. Destroyed him. Memphis, um, right? Memphis yeah, in the, the, the conference championship. Um, but that dude was unco- it was unbelievable, bro. I don't see that here. He's not even the best player on his team in college, high school. He was never the best player on his high school team. The high school team, come on. <laughs> the players that they get in their team, come on. Yeah, I understand that. And would you compare him to B.J. Boston? B.J. Boston runs circles around him on his team. Like these, they didn't, and they didn't win. They didn't win. Their best chance, COVID cut their season. But as a senior, they lost like 10, 13, 10 or 12 or 13 games. They got smoked four times by Notre Dame. And a Sherman Oaks, I think it is. They got smoked. Like, I just don't see, he's a, look, he's athletic. He has a good jump shot. Mm-hmm. And let's and let's 
He has a nice looking form jump shot. He has a nicer form than his dad. Mm-hmm. But and he, he seems very he seems intelligent. Yes, he does. But IQ players, Kate Martin. That's what that is. Who? He could be Kate Martin. He can be Kate Martin. Kate Martin's there. 25. He could be Kate Martin. He does all the right things, make the right plays, make the right passes. Intelligent. Kate Martin's I, 25. I, I, IQ. She played 65 years of college I, basketball. IQ player. He can be Kate Martin. Why he can't be Kate Martin? He can't make the right passes. He can't make the right plays. He can't do everything that you need him to do. Defense, defend, pick up 90 feet. Because he has to be that type of player to get on the court. No one guards 90 feet. 85, no 80 feet. We know who's the guard 80 feet. Motherfucker Avery Bradley, who was how tall? 6'2". He could be Avery Bradley. But look That's what Avery Bradley He could but be. Look who, but look at what Avery Bradley was in college. Avery Bradley was a motherfucking guard. Yeah. Motherfucking but he was chest. a fucking beast in college. Okay. So. This is my problem. It's like you're comparing guys that when they were in college... They were unreal. Yeah, but they, they were that guy. But then they became to the NBA became a role player. If he already knows, yes. his, if he already knows, yes. his, if he already knows his role. What's the problem? You see, he don't. You don't have to break his ego down and bring him back. So you, so he's you already, bring him in a, he's so already bringing a guy in as a role player. He's already coming off the to, rip. He's already hell yeah. He's already then coming, being undrafted. Then being an undrafted free agent. He's already coming to excel in his Kate Martin role. Kate Martin Bronny. <clears throat> That's what we're gonna call him. I. I you're comparing a 19 year old to a 25 year old who played five, six years of college basketball. He's played one. But his, why is there a problem? The, he has the knowledge. Why is there a, a problem? He's been around the knowledge and background of the highest, one of the highest IQ players in, in the world, in the history. That can't, that has to be, that has to count for something, Rudy. He, his dad is LeBron. And the knowledge that he gave. Again, why does that matter? Does Michael count? Jordan's sons were born of Michael Jordan. You think Michael Jordan's older son had Jordan, a better, Jordan, a better college player than Bronny? You think Jordan? You look like Jordan put the effort into those kids. That I don't LeBron, think he, I don't I don't LeBron. think there was a lot of things that went on there. But Marcus <laughs> Jordan was better in college than Bronny. You think Jordan put in the effort that LeBron put into Bronny? I don't think. I just the don't effort. Think. I don't know what effort Bron, LeBron James really put into his kid. <laughs> he plays basketball all year. It kind of yeah maybe it's a yeah we get we we we, 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 we we get all we, we get all the fucking we get all the social media shit like social media would tell you that that Jordan was a terrible father based on that because you don't see every moment of his day we get to see when LeBron takes a year takes a fucking leap <laughs> like it's a, it's a majorly different comparison in my oh, opinion yeah <clears throat> because we don't know. What where he was or if he was at his kids' games or what have you. But I know for sure that I'm sure that Marcus Jordan had the best trainers around. I'm sure he did. He played Division One basketball, and he was a better Division One basketball player than Bronny James was is right now. I'm not saying Bronny James can't become better. But when I say he's capped, <clears throat> I don't think... I don't think he becomes a forty-five percent shooter from three. What? His, I don't think his he, form he said he can. He do. doesn't match. Nah, fuck that. You know how hard that is. Forty percent. Go look how many. Go look how many guys shoot forty percent. Draymond shot thirty-eight percent one year. <laughs> that's all I got to say. I'm gonna rest on one that. One year. That's all. He, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I mean, it could be done if Draymond <laughs> could do it. I think yeah. it might have been forty percent. I could be wrong. Again. Go to it. You're talking about one season. So if he shoots forty percent one year, but shoots twenty eight percent another five, I'm just saying forty percent three point shooter. I'm just saying, with his, is Jimmy Butler a forty five percent three point shooter? I'm just saying, with his form, I I see the potential to be a good shooter. He's six one and a half. He's not going to get shots up over guys that are six eight. Yeah, he's going to sit in the corner and wait for it to come. So he's a corner three point shooter like PJ Tucker, Bruce Bowen, PJ Tucker. A lot of these people in the league. I don't even believe. I think you believe what you're saying right now. Saying, I don't. I don't think you I'm, believe I'm what not, you're saying. I'm right not going to count him out. That's all I'm saying. That's it's all. not about counting him out. It's about sitting here saying, "Take your ass back to school, go and get better." Why? If these people are looking at me, and get, give, looking at me, and giving me a chance. Why am I going to take advantage of the chance that I'm getting afforded to me? Give him a chance no, to do no, what, no, Nick? No matter, I'll bet you right. No I'll bet how, you right now. No matter how I'll bet chance. you right now. I'll bet you right now that the only team that would, would draft him is the Lakers. Gonna, I'll bet you right now. We're going to find out. No, you, you're going to lose that bet. If anyone besides the Lakers oh. drafts him, 
I'll give you a hundred bucks. I'll give you a hundred dollars. If the Lakers are the only thing that draft the team no, that drafts him, no, you give me a hundred dollars. You know, and ridiculous. if he doesn't get drafted, you give me five hundred dollars. No, 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 no. You know I'm very meticulous about Because I don't think he's gonna get I don't think he's gonna get drafted. Draymond shot thirty nine percent for thirty nine point five, forty percent this year. And he shot thirty eight point eight in fifteen, sixteen seasons. Huh, if Draymond could do that. What were the other seasons, Nick? 30s, 29s, 30s, 30s. 29s. If we're, if we're going to be using outliers as the example, I mean, we can go ahead and 30, use outliers. 33s, 33s, a couple of 33s in there. A lot of 28s, 27s. I, I, I want to get graphic right now, but it's be a little bit too much. But Because right. right. I can tell you that there are days where my girth is bigger than another day's. <laughs> where did you become the funny guy? <laughs> there are days where the blood pumps better than other days. <laughs> I'm just that did <laughs> you better post that. That's just funny. Fuck. I'm just saying, like we're using outliers as the example. We're using outliers. Some days you so last what, So so I, I have I have a nickname for I have my nickname on uh, Netflix. It's ten inches. That'll never exist. Um, <laughs> but there could be that one outlier day where the blood pumps really fucking hard. And it's 10 inches. That'll never happen, but I'm just saying, that one outlier day. <laughs> looking, in the, looking in the mirror like that, look at Damn, man, look at this. What's going on here? Well, I can't be like this every day. What's going on here? You know when it gets bigger is when it gets skinnier. You got to you gotta shave around here, too. That helps out also. I, I'm just, I, look, man, <laughs> I just, I just, I just want it to be, I, I just Look, nepotism exists. The, the the rules don't exist with LeBron. Because I can tell you right now that I watched enough high school basketball to know that that wasn't a top 25 player in the country as a senior. And he went to the McDonald's All-American game. I had guys that were way better than him. Way better than Wait, him. Wait, top 40? Top 300. It's top 300. Nick, you know what a top 300 player is? You think he's a top 300? You know how many players? How many high school players are in the country, bro? I get that, but he's definitely top 100. Hundreds of thousands. LeBron is a top 100 player. No, he's not. Right. No, he's not. He's right. a top 300 guy. Right, I think top- you know what top 300 is? You're in the top percent. Top 1%. Oh, please. That's what I'm saying. All right. So people, we're gonna- people have left. People have lost. So People have lost the reality. There's nobody in North Dakota, South Dakota, Montana. Uh, <laughs> Bro, I'm 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 telling you right now, top. He was a top. He's a top 300 guy, but he was ranked way higher because of who his dad was. I I, I he I'm was. not gonna say I watched enough. He of him. was. I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna come here <clears> and sit down and say I watched as much of him as you did. But I'm gonna say when I did watch him, he was a decent, good basketball player that I would love to have on my team. So you, are you win. telling me? Are, are you telling me a top three hundred guys on a decent, good basketball player? It's a hell of a player. I, I, it's a hell of a player. He's a top. But it's but but it's the but it's but it's the truth. He's a top hundred. No, he's not. Because with his athletic ability, Nick, his jump shot, his he shot the ball way better. Than I can I be? Can I, you want to be? You want to be frank? That I was a top three hundred player. You want to? <laughs> I don't know if you were or not. You actually played four years of high school, college. Oh, my God. Tristan Wilson out of New Orleans. Oh, uh, I like Tristan. So I'm not really is good. better than him. He's a better high school player than him. He's a better high school player than him. And where's Tristan Wilson going to school? That's Division two. No, that's one Division two. Well, one. I think one Presbyterian. Or something. Is that Division two? I think, no. It, it's, it's 300 Division one schools. I'm pretty sure that's <clears> I don't know anymore. Tristan has a sweet stroke. He's six six. I mean, Bronny had a sweet stroke in college. I mean, high school. Still a sweet stroke. He don't go in like Tristan, but hey, we'll see. I'm just giving an example. Like this this is we we have we have law. He's going to go to Presbyterian. It's not Division Two, Division One. I'm pretty sure. sure. D one. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And I'm not sitting here saying that I think there are guys that get pub. Like, they get, he gets free pub. You know what's funny? You know who doesn't get the free pub? 
his younger brother. Bryce James does not get the pub that Bronny got. Doesn't get anywhere near it. But I've watched them both play, and Bryce is 6'6", and he's, he's smooth. He's smooth. Yeah. And, yeah, you know, huh? Division, division one? one? Yeah. Okay. Big South Conference. Marcus Allen is better than him. But, bro, I talked to Lawton about it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, Foles Lawton, Williams is the coach at Northern High School, has won seven state championships. Marcus was playing with a busted fucking knee or foot all of the playoffs. The reason he played like complete and utter trash for most of the playoffs was because he was hurt. He never told Lawton that he was hurt. He had 19 in the game or 19 or 20 against Jensen Beach. In the state championship, he was terrible. But his presence, his presence. Because I'll tell you right now, if you had told me watching the two of those guys, I thought Tristan was a better basketball player. He looked way better. Yeah. Tristan was balling in the playoffs. Came a long way, but I, but, I told you. But Marcus, I, I used to practice. <clears throat> Talking about from his freshman year to sophomore to, junior, to senior year, handling the ball, being more confident. Just being an all-around guy as a senior vet, someone making the big shots and handling the press and the pressure, even though, you know, they had other point guards, but he definitely took the mantle of being that guy. And Marcus is ranked Marcus is ranked 64 nationally. I mean, you could, you could chalk it up to He's him. He's ranked 64 nationally. To him not having him. I would Which tell you that he is talk. better than Bronny. Huh? Seeing what you saw, that's, you could chalk it up to some of that. I've seen them both. No, I'm talking about I've talking up to him at the end of the year. Well, the, the... Yeah. Well, yeah, Lawton told me he was, he, it was either his knee or his foot. Because mm-hmm. he was in a cast a week, within a couple of days after that. So you have a kid who was battling an injury, a guy who was averaged 20 and 11, who was the, the number one senior in, in South Florida. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, I'm, again, I want, people may think I'm crazy. I'm not hating. People love to use that thing, that term hating. I'm not hating on this kid. I don't have the energy to do it, but I have respect for the sport. And I think that we've lost respect for a sport where, it, where re- there's really a conversation of, am I going to draft this guy's son so I can get his dad? Yes. Like, what is going yes, on? Yes, yes, yes. Be him. Then if you're yes, going to yes. do it, say it. Yes. If you're going to do that, Say it. I don't have to don't say give it. me the bullshit. Not you. I'm just saying. I didn't have to say don't it. Don't give me the bullshit about how he's so skilled. He's not. He's not. He, he and has, that's the problem. He might have enough skills, but I'm definitely a skills to do what? We're gonna find out. But is Gabe Vincent be, is Gabe Vincent better than him? According to LeBron, no. <laughs> According to LeBron, no. Apparently. According to you, Nick, is Gabe Vincent better than Bronny James? Yeah, the man is 30 years old, 25 years old, 26 years old. He's a grown you man. Just made, you, you, you just made him 30 years old. He's a, he's a grown man right now. I don't think you just made better. You just made Gabe Vincent, who's 27, a 30-year-old. Yeah, he's 6'2". I, I brought it back. I brought it back. <clears> he's 6'2". Six six two. And you know what? He had to fight for every second that he's got. Yeah. And he's a far better shooter. Yeah. And, I and he's it. actually and he's actually a point guard. Mm. Look, I I get it. We, we want we want to have these debates about tweeners. You know very well that tweeners never make that never last in the NBA. Gabe Vincent's a don't. tweener. What? Not, Gabe Vincent's a tweener. He's not a point guard. No, Gabe Vincent's a point guard. Man, he plays point guard. Man. He plays shooting guard. He plays point guard by default. We see it. We know. We're Heat fans. We went we to the watched. NBA Finals with him at point guard. We played we played point guard by committee. Bam brought the ball up. Jimmy had the ball in his hand. Come on now. We're not going to do that. We're not going to come on. He this was team. a starter. He was a starter on a team that went to the NBA Finals. Okay. In five years, LeBronny James will be. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. Maybe. I don't know. Who knows? I, I don't know. He could play for the Knicks and have to get put in the game. Because they all their players are underground. All their players are hurt. Oh, yeah. All their players are hurt. 
Orange I and mean, blue. Uh, orange and blue skies. Orange and blue skies. Yeah, I, I, I have no problem having all those orange and blue, blue cries. Orange so, and blue cries. That's my blue. <clears> that works for me. That works for me. Cool. And I just want to end on this last topic real quick. Okay, I know we're going. I don't know. I don't know if we're gonna. I don't know if we're gonna record on Wednesday because I don't know what's gonna I happen. I know we're going. If anything, me and you'll record something. Yeah, we'll record something. Because I haven't done a rant. I haven't ranted or anything like that. And, and I need to do some ranting. We've now watched four WNBA Caitlin Clark basketball games. Yeah. I have never seen people hate a woman so much because of what she's earned. Because of what she's earned. I've never seen a man get hated so much. LeBron never has been hated for what he's earned. Never been hated for what he's earned. The hatred that I read on Facebook, on Instagram, they literally take still shot photos of her complaining or voicing when she's being fouled. There's a picture right now that I've seen on Facebook where Dijon Carrington flat out is fouling the shit out of her. Arm is literally wrapped around her chest and over her arm, backing down. And people are saying that's great defense. Look, man, Kaylin Clark is in the WNBA because Kaylin Clark can score. What the Indiana Fever is doing right now is they are destroying their best asset. We, I just watched the game tonight. Well, the end of it, because I, I didn't see any of it until the like, last two minutes. Aaliyah Boston misses a bunny layup to tie the game. A bunny. bunny. The possession before, she scored on a layup. I'm sorry, on a, on a short, like, six-footer. On a pocket pass from Clayton Clark. Has Caitlin Clark struggled with turnovers? Absolutely. It's to be expected. The one thing the WNBA does that the NBA doesn't do is they finished playing college basketball in April. And they're in the league. They're playing regular season games four weeks later. Four weeks from when she was drafted, she's playing in the league. The NBA's draft is in July. They don't start playing till like end of October. Yeah, man, November. They don't even give it like they didn't even get a chance to get this girl in a weight room. And then I hear people say she's undersized. She's six foot tall. She's not undersized. Not for her position. Not she needs to gain back. some weight and get some strength. It will come. She's, but she, she's only, it'll come. Yeah. But she they didn't give her a chance to. They play a month after the season ended. No time to to become a pro. <clears throat> Right now. No time to become a pro. Cameron Brink can't make a bucket. Number two pick. Number three pick is injured. Camila Cardoso. I don't know who the fourth pick is. Cardoso was four. She wasn't three? No, she was four. I'm pretty sure. Who, who, I don't know who was three then. The girl from Tennessee. Great. She's okay. What's her name? Angel then? Reese mm -hmm. is shooting 34% from the field. She's rebounding the ball. She does. That's but she's shooting. We knew that. But but she's shooting thirty four percent on layups. Mm -hmm. Like this is what's actually happening, and all you get is a complete shit show insult of this woman, bro. There's Arike Agumbula. I can't pronounce her name. The girl that plays for Dallas. Mm -hmm. She was nine for twenty eight. Last week in a game. You know how many shots Caitlin Clark took tonight in a four point loss? It was 14. 11. 11. Oh, 14. 11. 14 other day. She was nine for 17 against the Liberty on the, this past weekend. She had 22, eight and six. She did have eight turnovers. I watched the game. Those turnovers, many of them were not on her. Uh, there was a the, half of them were on. Okay. When you, have, when you have eight, four of them is many. Yes. I watched her teammates drop passes that were given her, that were called turnovers on her. I watched her teammates fumble the ball. And it's a turnover on you if 
the person doesn't actually catch it. I watched a turnover get called tonight on her on a clear kick ball. Clear kick the ball. The girl ain't kicked the ball. Nick, that call that's called the kick ball 99 out of 100 times. It will be it does get called, but that would get called the but kick she ball. Threw the ball at- 99 out of a hundred times. She threw the ball at her feet. And it, it was she a threw cor- a bounce pass that hit the woman's foot. It was a correct. We have to stop the, the cap. It was a correct. If that is LeBron James throwing that pass, that's a kickball. It's a correct. Is it the correct call? Is it the correct? I don't know if it's a correct ball call. It's a kickball. She threw it at her ball. She threw it to her feet. All right, man. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Right, I'm right, not, I'm just, I'm every not. bounce pass is thrown to your feet. Every bounce pass. She threw it directly at the girl's feet. I'm not. She didn't throw direct. She was throwing a bounce pass to someone that was on the left. It went right at her feet, Ruth. I'm not. I, that, we're, we're, that's neither here nor there. That's good. She is averaging 17 and a half points a game right now. That's good. Over 40% shooting. While being Mother. double teamed that's- pretty much the entire game. Nobody gets double teamed the way she's being double teamed right now. Nobody. 30 feet from the rim. It is personal, also, and you can see it, huh? I say also it shows that she got to handle the pressure better because you're going to keep turning the ball over in those situations. You know what? It's going to cut. It's going to keep happening. She has to handle the ball better. She <clears throat> has to be better in those situations. Nick, I say no. I'm, I'm on knowledge. I'm going to be the person that just. I'm just giving you the counter perspective. She has to handle the ball better. But like you said, she just finished college basketball. It will come a with- month ago. The a pressure, month ago. The pressure that's on her and how she's being guarded by other teams because they're making the point to, like as Diana Taurasi said they would, it's a different league. People are not just going to let her come over here and do what the heck she wants to do. That's not going to happen. But in time, will she be able to do what the hell she want to do? Hell yeah. And if y'all think that's not going to happen, you know, I'll show y'all fucking mind. Like Victor won by y'all my mama. He started off a little slow, a little shaky, and then he got it rolling. And this is going to be the same type of situation. In a month or two, we're going to be looking at at, at Caitlin and be like, damn, she's the baller that we all thought she was. But the, hold on. I'm sorry. My bad. I, 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 the W, I mean, not W, the WNBA needs her to be great. They need her to be great. So I I get the competitiveness from the players and things of that nature. But the fans, we all, these new fans, we're tuned in because of her. Everybody else has been a benefit. Now we get to see a little bit more of the WNBA and what they have to offer. But I'm not watching because of anything else. I watched and tuned in because of Caitlin. I, I haven't seen what Angel plays. I see the highlights every now and then. Maybe because her games are not nationally on television. I mean, we have to buy it on um, WNBA, um, the streaming service. Um, but that WNBA, it's a lot invested in Caitlin Clark. And if she doesn't come out and do what she was doing in, in college in another year, we'll, they'll lose all their viewership, and all the shit will be for nothing. So she need to get on her game, and they need her. They really do. Because in the next 10, 15 games, if she's not doing what we thought she was going to be doing, we're going to lose the fans that came in, those, that's paying attention to this league, and it's going to all go to shambles. And all the little money that we got for these charter flights and, and 100 k to each player in Vegas is all going to go away. So um, we need her. The WNBA needs her. All right, real quick. I don't think she's playing poorly. She's not. But the turnovers she's, not the she's The turnovers will get fixed. Turnovers will get fixed. It is what it is. Her teammates suck. Like, her teammates suck. Like, they're bad. Like, I thought they were better than they are. I know they were the worst team in the league last year. I thought Leah Boston. But I thought, Ali- but I thought Aaliyah Boston was better. better. She's tragically bad. She's horrible. She actually. looked slow and Her big. first three games, she's... Her first three games this year were embarrassing. She's not a rookie anymore. Kelsey Mitchell, they actually took her off the bench to start off. Now she's starting again. But she shoots 35% from the field. That's layup, Miss Woman. Huh? She missed a few couple. She missed a few layups. This is the, but this is like the thing. Like, uh, like, you know, my son was watching with me tonight. And he, he's 10. And he said, 
the elementary school could beat these women. <laughs> and I and I was like, no, they, they couldn't. That that's not true. A high school boys team would beat them by fifty. Um, but but when a little kid says that, it shows you how like bad this is. Arike Ogumbowali is shooting thirty seven point three percent from the field. She's nine and a half field goals to twenty five and a half field goal attempts. She's averaging tw- um, 30 points a game. She's the leading scorer of the WNBA right now. She shoots 37.5%. Are we for real? Right now, Caitlin Clark is 15th in the league in scoring. 15th, 17 points per game. How do you find that? Because I could have found shit I'm on, on the w-, w. I'm on the W. I'm on the W. I'm on the W. There's six. Terrible. Their page is w- fucking terrible. The WNBA website is horrible. It's fucking horrible. What it's, the fuck is that? It, it's trash, bro. Well, how do you want, it's trash. How are they going to have new people coming in to watch your fucking game? This is the and, most non-navigatable site I've ever seen for a pro is sport. fucking terrible. What the hell are y'all doing? Y'all getting all this new money that's coming in. And we're about to get all these factors. We can't find a motherfucking marketer to, to make the page. But I, I finally went on a WNBA page today. And it was the worst thing to find anything. I it's wanted to find awful. stats to come on here and talk about it. I just gave up. I said, fuck it. Rudy it takes a half an hour to figure it out. I said, Rudy could have just have all the stats. You got to click them. X's. You have the X out of shit. And I, I, I mean, there's only one site I've seen worse, and that's that's ESPN soccer site. Like, other than that, this is the absolute worst league site I've ever seen. It's it's designed by children. Oh my god! It's designed by children. It's the same people that designed Angel Reese's signature shoe, um, which I'll talk about in a second, real quick as well, because that I thought was an absolutely was so offensive to her, and such an insult to her that they would literally use a repeated shoe and call it a signature shoe while coloring it pink. That's a joke. But she's fifteenth in scoring. She is. Is an assist. Good luck. She is. Oh, where is she there? She's 11th in assists in the league. She'll finish top 10 in scoring. And she'll, she'll finish She'll finish top five in scoring, I would think, if they finally let her start shooting the ball. Top 10 in Because scoring. what they're doing to her is they're literally erasing her best quality, her ability to shoot the fucking rock. 11 shots, 17 points. Last game, 17, 9 for 17, 22 points. She had one bad game. Yes, she had a 10 turnover. The turnovers are going to get worked out, but the woman can score, and you got to let her shoot the rock. Like, she has to take seven, 20 shots a game. You ha- well, Otherwise, what's the fucking point? You're going to do <clears throat> half of these teams still play in 4,000 seat arenas. The, Va- the Aces supposedly sold out all their season tickets, yet they still haven't sold out a game. Best team in the league. Go look at how many people went to the New York Liberty game. That doesn't include Indiana Fever. Nobody's there. They like, had, they're sitting here they had 17, pushing. I think they had 17 k today, actually. Today? Yeah. At least that's what I saw on the WMA site that I had to navigate. No, 14, I, 14, I, something like that. It was, it was a nice the, the Dallas Wings play in front of 6,000 people. Like, Liberty had 14, you, something like that. It was, it was a nice let me, let me Let me go find this. Like, for as much as they're pushing the WNBA, even when you look for it on the ESPN site, it's listed so far down. It's like, I got to dig for this shit. I think they put, it's embarrassing. Yeah. But let's be real. This young woman got chartered jets for these team, teams in her first week. What do you think? Why do you think that happened? It happened because of her. She brought the eyes. They're gonna, they're gonna tell us. They're gonna tell us on ESPN that, that they've been the, working on this and this. I say, bullshit. I say, cut it out. They got no money. Cut she it. brought the eyes, the and she's the reason that these teams all are getting chartered cut, jets now. Cut the now, now, cut I, it. now, not not all of them have gotten it yet, but while while some of them have gotten it already. But she's the reason. And they can sit here and cry and bitch and moan. Let's be real, dude. Let's let's talk about it for a second. Asia Wilson. They made a big old fucking stink because people, she hadn't gotten a signature shoe yet. 
Nick, let me, let me, let, why don't you tell me the last time you bought a signature shoe of a woman? The 30th of February? Never? Never? I mean, but they, I had a lady but they have, argue with They have to push it for the, they're going to be younger girls that actually watch, and that's who they have to push it for. The men are not going to buy it. Have you seen for the most part the shoe that they just put out for Sabrina Ionescu? No. The number two? No. It's fire. Yeah. It's fire. Why don't you go get me some Ionescu? It's like a it's like a Kobe. It's like a Kobe. Yeah, low top. Because she, her favorite player was Kobe. The low top. But it's like it's, it's low tops. They're fire, bro. Go look for the Sabrina twos. They're fire, like hard. And then Reebok puts out this fucking. Air Monarch level fucking shoe for Angel Reese. <laughs> they used no. Oh, I I swear to God, Nick. Ooh. I showed you that. I sent you the picture, didn't I? Yeah, I know. I know. I see. Oh. It's a carbon copy of oh. a forty dollars sneaker at finish line. The they just changed the color Ooh, and added Angel might, on it, get, and they changed it to pink. I might get me some some Sabrinas. You see him? Ooh. They probably don't make them for men, though. You'd be getting a woman's size. You gotta get a size 12. It's just two sizes. Up. There's some big feet women out there. They gotta have 12 out there somewhere. They gotta have a fucking 12 somewhere. There's a fucking 12 somewhere. And I'm getting it. But, so let's see here. Today, the, the New York Liberty played the Seattle Storm. God, this is so bad. They gotta, this is so they gotta bad. do better from this side. They have to. Listen, this is this is um, they're the Liberty's four and zero. They shot forty one point three percent as a team. Seattle shot thirty four point three percent. What my what my what my old boo Scotty did? She had like nine assists. There was nine thousand three hundred eighty one people in an eighteen thousand seat arena. Oh, nine thousand. That's what it was. Maybe I was off. They're playing at the Barclays. There's these 18,000. It's empty. I'm not getting that. They're playing with black curtains around the upper deck. Okay. This is the team that went to the WNBA finals. This is a, These are facts. At the end of the day. These are facts. The end, like, people don't like facts. At the end of the day. People want to know. People want to know. Rudy, Rudy. Who is watching and why they're watching. Let's take a look at the Indiana Fever game on Sunday. 17K, 17,500. 17,735. So. But we have so to, let me ask you, who'd they go to see watch play? Come on now. No, I want you to say it out loud it, so the morons in the congregation understand that the woman they're shitting on is the one that's creating the buzz, the buzz. that makes people buy tickets to watch this fucking garbage product. It's a garbage fucking product of bricklayers. Layups, miss. House builders. Layups. Layup missers. No, no. Like, I don't want to hear it. It's a bad product. Rudy, my, it's bad. My fiance came out the other day on Sunday. She said, You watch WNBA? Because obviously a woman is not watching it because <laughs> they need the men to support it. No matter what they say, they need, need, they need the men to support it because women are not going to watch it. That's just not what women do when it comes to sports. So y'all could be over there bitching and complaining in the comments and saying, Oh, we need more people to support. No, women, y'all have to support because men are not going to watch it as much as you think we are. It's not intriguing to us. The layups are missed. It's a lot of those. The, 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 the athleticism is different. It's, it's, just, it's just not for our eyes. So, women, y'all going to have to watch. Y'all going to have to support this league to keep it going. Because we, yes, we're going to be here for a little bit. We're going we're gonna to watch Caitlin. And she might hold us here for a while. And we might even fall in love with a couple other players, maybe, hopefully. But it's the layup. It's, it's a lot. It's, it's different. Yesterday, Seattle played at, at Washington. Washington's arena is the size of Dillard's. Dillard High School. They play in front of, they have a capacity of 4,200. It's sold out. 4,200. WNBA team plays in front of 4,200. That's the size of their building. They got to start somewhere. I'm just saying. We're, we're, 27, years, we're 27 years in. I'm just trying to be the guy. Who... We're 27 years in. 
In that game, in that game, Seattle shoots 41%. Washington shoots 40%. The leading scorer for Seattle is Jewel Lloyd. She was 6 for 19 for 24 points. 12 for 14 from the line. Did you see recently that State Farm has a commercial with Jewel Lloyd? Who? The point guard for Seattle. Oh. Or shooting guard. Whatever she is. I'm sorry. The person that missed 13 and 19 shots. I'm not familiar. Exactly. They're literally force feeding this shit down people's throats. As they should, though. As they should do it. That's they, great. On their marketing side, they should do it. They should. Nah, how much? They don't, for, how they much, don't, they don't market. How bro, much, they don't market. The, how much do we ingest? This? Who's paying Who's paying for the marketing? Because the NBA doesn't market this goddamn much. The mark, NBA doesn't market this damn really, much. At the end of the day, they got to ride the wave. We already said that. They have but to But again, ride the I, wave. I'm, I'm, I'm going back to the... To, again, I'm going back to the shit you want to shove down my throat. And I'm telling you right now, the woman who's responsible for this shit being shoved down my throat, people want to go see. And when she doesn't play, people don't go. People aren't going. Let's see what else here. I'm 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 going down the line, man. I don't have a problem. I could do this all day. Because I like to prove people I like to prove how stupid people sound when they're on Facebook basically trashing this girl. Trashing her, bro. But she's not good. She sucks. But, she's garbage. Hold on. Garbage. She's not garbage, but she's got four thousand points in college. She's gonna be she ain't garbage. She's in the eye of everybody. She's gonna be critiqued. You literally just you you literally you just can critique her you, you can critique her all day. Make it fair. Every critique I have of Bronny James is fair. Fair is not fair. 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 Nobody does fair anymore. Here, here's another one. Phoenix versus Atlanta. This was on Saturday. 40% from the field. 40% from the field. 10,000 people there. That building sees 20,000 people. Empty. Empty. An empty building. Like, this is a, these are facts. Can you imagine if there was only 10,000 people at a heat game? Remember, I told you this. It's tickets sold, not bodies in the building. The Heat sell out preseason bullshit. No one goes. But but they sold 19,600 tickets. They sold them. They're sold. I would have broken one of jersey the whole time. Why? It was just to to, to rub it in your face. You're you're feeling feeling a little fat in, in it, aren't you? Nah, you know, just you—you you were, you were twenty pounds lighter when you fucking first put that jersey on, huh? I, I was twenty pounds lighter. <laughs> that is true. No, because I went into the NFL at one hundred and seventy pounds. Yeah, you were—you were skinny as fuck. And I finished that year at one hundred and eighty-six pounds. Really? Yeah. Look at this. A lot of Chipotle. Here we go. Shout out Chipotle. The, 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 Chipotle. The Las Vegas Aces play the Sparks at home. The, they play in a twelve thousand seat arena. They can't sell it out. They're the two-time champions. They can't sell it out. I, I, I want people to truly understand the impact this young woman's had. She's had an impact that you can't quantify. You're only watching this shit because of her. And whatever you're watching, you're watching because of her. If you bought the WNBA League Pass, you bought it because of her. Trust me. You don't even know that you did it. You don't even know that's why you did it, but that's why you did it. Because no one was talking about the WNBA a year ago. Nobody. Nobody cared. Nope. Nobody watched. And I can tell you this. How many people watched the WCA championship game? Over 18 million. How many people watched the WNBA game? Two. 2.5. Which is a, a record number for the WNBA. Pe- people aren't all carrying over. They're not. Now, I really want to talk about this last thing because we're over two hours already. Cool, it's supposed to be a 30-minute conversation. Cool. It's all good because we didn't record last week. No, it's the a- Angel Reese signature shoe is an embarrassment. I have a real problem with creating a shoe for someone and not actually giving a crap about putting effort into actual design of the shoe. We don't have to give everyone a shoe just because men have a shoe. You do, Nick, you do know that in the NBA, there are only like 12 guys that have a signature shoe, right? Mm. Like 12. Yeah. Between all the design, all the brands, New Balance, Nike, 
Jordan, a deep, maybe 15, something like that. It's not a lot. It's not a lot. And now there's a Skechers basketball show. Did you know that? Skechers is coming, man. I'm going to I'm gonna go back to my Skechers. My wife's going to hate it, but it's coming. And actually, there's two players in the NBA who are um, sponsored by Skechers. I don't know if you knew that. Somebody should wear the Nike Air Monarchs. That's what they should wear. That's what I wear. They're amazing. Oh, They're, hey, Nike Air yeah. Monarchs. Y'all got one with those shoes. Those are the most comfortable shoes in the history of history. They're going to mock me because on Father's Day, I'm going to rock it. But um, the whole I day, will tell you that the Nike, there's a Nike running shoe that I have. Don't well, compete with the Monarchs. They're not as comfy. It's, get like some, standing on, it's like standing on a pillow. Get, get you some Monarchs. Change your life. And as, I'll never, and, I, 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 will, I will never wear those shoes. And it adds those another still, inch and a half to your height. Those are too, oh, I don't, I don't care about growing any. I, I, <laughs> I don't care about girth. Um, <laughs> this show has been um, so far left. But I have, but I have, but I have a real problem. And when they posted this damn sneaker, it is a repeat of a current shoe they already have out. It looks like a newer version of the AI shoe from 30 fucking years ago, but a low top. The AIs were not a low top. They're a high top. But everything of this, everything of the design is already there. They have a, I, there was a, a shoe and I'll post it on the video. It's a blue and white shoe that is at finish line right now for $40. They literally changed the color from blue to pink. They changed the, the rope they have around it. From white to pink. They changed the tongue and just put angel on there. And on the inside, they put unapologetically angel. This is what they Reebok put out as a signature shoe. And you wonder why Reebok has no NBA players. Their shoes suck. And their design is made by a five year old. It's ugly. I know you said you like it because like, it's pink. I like the pinks. It made me feel like a back. It is not a design that you put out when you're trying to make a splash for a player in the league who you're trying to promote. Killer Cam will wear those. Uh, 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 Killer Cam, Kanye, back in the days when they used to rock the pink. Come on, baby. Jim Jones. All of them. They were thriving, these shoes right there. They were thrive. Fucking thrive. Reebok is going to charge 120 bucks for these fucking monstrosities. I was not, someone called me a hater, by the way, for this. Multiple people call me a hater. I'm not hating on Angel Reese. I'm offended for her. I'm bothered for her. I'm bothered that this is what Reebok would put out and call a signature shoe. It looks like straight up trash. It is a $40 sneaker. I had some old lady bo bother me on Facebook when I commented on it. She says, why are you even looking at these shoes? They're for women. What? Do you know how fucking stupid you sound? Women are begging men to watch this trash product. They're begging us to watch this garbage basketball. It's garbage. On a great day, it's garbage. So you can imagine on a regular day, it's worse than garbage. It's horrible to watch. And you're sitting here telling me, why am I looking at it? I don't know, because someone posted it. And I made a comment about it. And I feel bad that a woman who's worked her ass off gets a shoe that's not an actual authentically new shoe it's a carbon reprint of a shoe that they already have that no one will buy and it's 40 bucks in the store it's like wearing champion in 1997 which all these stupid moron kids put on today and spend 300 dollars for that shit was bobo bobo bullshit and those shoes look bobo they're embarrassing. There's a reason there's no NBA player since Shaq and AI that have signed with Reebok. Because the shoes fucking suck. And that's what they gave that girl. 
I'm bothered for her. I'm not hating on her. I'm bothered for her. But you know what? If you don't want me to look, listen here. Don't ask me to buy tickets to watch these trash can games. Women, go support your fucking garbage can sport because the sport sucks. You don't like it? Fuck you. I don't care anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. Don't you... You can't even support your own goddamn sport. And you get mad because a man makes a comment about it? Not to mention the racial components of all of it as well, which are beyond. Beyond. Like, this is... Bro, I feel like I'm in 2000... Whatever, 2024. I didn't feel this kind of racism in this country in 2000, bro. I didn't. Like I, Maybe I was blind, maybe because social media wasn't as big. I'm sure it existed. Definitely. But it seems like it's worse today. Definitely a few years ago. The hatred. There's hatred out there today, bro. You can't say anything without someone calling you a fucking racist. Is that, is that, the, is that the default comment? Racist. Racist. Angel Reese ain't very good at basketball. Racist. Folks, this man right here said that Angel Reese ain't very good at basketball. Is he racist too? Oh, but I've been called racist by white people too. Yeah. I'm racist to white people. I'm racist to black people. I'm racist to Hispanics. I'm just racist, accordingly. I, I laugh at it now, bro. It's, it's comedy. It's straight up comedy. The shoe sucks. It looks like shit. And they should do her do better by her. They should do better by her. Because outside of the reason that people will buy it, nobody will buy it because it's fire. But those Sabrina 2s are fire. And I still won't buy them. I'm getting it size 12. I don't know what you're talking about. They make them extra, they make them extra narrow. Yeah, I'm going to get some Angel Reese's too. I'm gonna You're going to get some Camilla Cardoso's, right? I'm going to get some Angel Reese's uh, pink and whites, baby. It'll be 2003. You know that there was, there was some shit. All over again, baby. There was some shit that I saw with the Chicago Sky where they were on social asking these women what would they be doing if they weren't playing basketball? One of them said something with my hands, like a construction worker. That's a good job. Camila Cardoso said model. I can see that coming. She's, she's tall. She's, she's, she's got a pretty, she's got a decent face. She's a pretty decent face. And she's tall. Slim up a little bit. All right, now. They sounded worse than men, because when you ask men that question, men have no fucking idea. Shit. But these answers are like, Shit. Shit. All right. Man. Like shit. Huh? Really? I think we have to. You know what? You know, you know something happened today? This is funny as shit. I, I don't know if this is real or not. There was a post asking in one of my MMA groups, do you care about the John Jones Stephen Miocic fight they announced for November in Madison Square Garden? Do you care about seeing it? My answer was simple. No, I don't. Just no. You know who liked my post? Dana what? I don't know if this is a real profile or not, but it looks real because there's like 18 million followers of it. Andrew Tate. <laughs> I was like, is this, is this what? I thought that man was banned from his fucking social media. Oh my God. There, was, there was even a check mark. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we should get him as a guest. <laughs> Donald might not like that. <laughs> I guarantee you, we'd have a million new followers. The 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 toxic men of, of the world. Yeah. You have no response. Yeah. Yeah. You have no response. I mean, I'm not toxic. <clears throat> but you're not. Well. I'm talking about the people that would subscribe because of him. I mean, I keep it buck. This is fucking capitalism, dog. 
This is capitalism 101. I have We're working our ass off the Grog Channel. I have integrity. We ain't LeBron. I we ain't have, getting subscribers because we breathe. I'm an, I have integrity. Nah. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the follow-up, bro. Don't get me fucking wrong. I'm going to take it. I I'm thought gonna, it was hilarious. Gonna, I, I actually thought it was like, is this for real? Let's just show to more and more people watching it because people are going to repost it. People are going to hate it. People are going to like us just like it happened every day now. People hate <laughs> bro, Rudy. If, people love Rudy. People, yeah. it, it don't matter. It, <laughs> If, we, if I could get, no. get me Donald Trump on the show. Okay. <laughs> I asked Donald some fucking questions. Why don't you like black people? <laughs> what are you talking about? He, he, <laughs> black oh. people love that damn man when he was when they were making rap music about him. You kidding? It he, was like he, he was God. He freed. He, he took a couple black people out of jail for that rap. And whoa. <laughs> this was long before that, man. Man. This is long before that. <clears throat> yeah, well, first minutes. You know, we got a couple episodes. We got a couple things. <clears throat> hey, you know. But we're shit. not going to let that run. <laughs> I just think, I, I just, we need to get a guest, man. We need to get some new guests on here. We do. We, need, we, we had our one guest. We need to get another guest on here who's going to ruffle some feathers. Find me somebody. Shit. <laughs> I don't know. Find me somebody who has a following. Shit, get me Angel Reese on here. Oh, we can have a conversation with her. So she could beat your ass up for this damn TV she can, she can, I'll keep it a buck, man. I have never, bro. I, I I I have no problem asking people questions. Let them answer them. Shit, yeah. it's an interview. As, as you should. It's an interview. I have no problem ask, asking questions. Let them answer. Yeah. I'd ask her to her face. Do you like your shoe? I guarantee you. She looked at that shoe. She was like, "This is fucking ridiculous." I guarantee it. I guarantee it. There's no way. Her management and There's team. There's no had it. way. Okay. Huh? Her management and her team had an okay <clears throat> problem. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Did they present her with designs before they showed that shit to her? That's what they normally do to people. Yes, and they're not the same shoe that already exists. All right. Are you gonna buy some Asia Wilson shoes? If she has some fire shoes, are you man. gonna say? Are you gonna say who as well? No, I know Asia. No, I mean, I'm just saying, because I'm going to start naming players. You're start saying who left and right like an owl. I know. I know a few. And now she has a yeah. side 12 that's, and women that's, that's fire. I will cop some. All I got to say to this, folks, is understand that the person that, you, the reason you're watching this shit right now is because of the woman that you're taking a dump on and calling trash. And she sure as shit ain't trash. She ain't trash. The girl, she ain't trash. She's playing... She's not playing great, but she ain't playing terribly. And the thing that can get fixed real fast when you get used to the league turnovers. is turnovers. Turnovers will get fixed. But you can't be holding her 11, 12 shots a game. That, that coach is on the hot seat already. Because people are in Indiana are like, let this girl shoot the fucking rock. I'm not sitting here. That's like bringing Usain Bolt on your football team and saying you can't run deep routes in, in, as a wide receiver. That's what he does. He runs. He's fast. Can you imagine if they put Tyree Kill and only had him hand, hand the ball to Tyree Kill? Under runs. Run, bro. Like you, you take away their best tool. Like that's stupid. But you got people that are shooting 25 shots a game in the WNBA at 37.5%. So <clears throat> I don't know if we're gonna record again this week, but if we do. There'll be some more shit to talk about, I'm sure. Oh, by the way, the Florida Panthers advanced. They're playing the Rangers. I'm hella excited about that. Let's go, boys. And uh, Yankees are the number are the number one team in the American League right now. Blew the game tonight, but number one team in the league. And uh, that's all I got, man. You got something to, to wrap up, Nick? Uh, no. Um, you talked a lot. This, this was my, supposed to be a 30 minute episode. Guys. My throat's killing me, man. Killing me. Oh, by the way, folks, just so you know, I am, my wife is due to give birth either in the, in the next seven to 10 days. So we will try to record. I'm sure if I am unavailable, Nick and Don will record. Yep. Um, but we will figure it out and stuff will be. We had a slow week last week because I got sick and things happened or what have you. But, uh, yeah, I'm about to have a baby, so 
Got to figure out how to record and not yell too much, not wake up my newborn soon. Oh, welcome to the life, baby. I've been there, man. I got three. This will be my third. Nico about to be my... Nico walk out of here at 12 o'clock <clears> every night. He's about, I'm surprised he didn't make it out of here yet. Really? Yeah, he comes to bed. He makes his way to our bedroom at 12, 1230 every night. Is he sleeping in your bed? Yeah, when we wake up, he comes to our room. He gets right in between us, so whatever little eater, eater, I thought I was going to happen, I better get it in before because kids are player haters, so whoever's thinking about having a kid later on in life, this is freaking me a little lesson. Oh, they're, um, co- they're, they're straight up cock walks. They're cock blockers. Whenever you, or if you planned it, <laughs> if you plan to have some I remember. I, I, with, your, I remember. with your lady and y'all planned it, that's the <clears> day that your kid is going to do <throat> whatever he wasn't supposed to do that day so y'all don't do that in the court. I, I remember my older son, Nico. He slept in our bed for way too long because he was colicky and he never really slept through the night very well. And I remember one night I had had it. <laughs> and we got divorced. <laughs> hey, as a man. We got divorced. I, I, I mean, I, I mean that, dead ass. That's such it a was frustration like, is different. It was just like, and people will say I'm a horrible person for saying this, but I was like, get this mother effort out of my bed. No, like I can understand bro, why that happens in a lot of relationships. Get this, man, it's like I'm not saying it to, be, but it's hard, man. It's hard. It's tough. So, it's tough. So, so before y'all, uh, I got, I got, I got a snoo. So, I got a snoo. I'm hoping that shit works. Um, but we will be having a baby in the next seven to ten days. I know my wife is ready to get rid of this damn thing. Pop it out. She's sick of it. Rudy's having and, a kid uh, at forty years old. <clears throat> Good luck. 46. That kid is going to be running up laps on him. I'll be dead before he's out of college, man. Fuck. <laughs> I hope not. I hope not, too, but, you know, I hope not. Oh. I pray. I pray. Oh. I, I got to lose some fucking weight. Yeah, but anyhow, folks, thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Follow us at Come On Now, the pod- Come On Now podcast at uh, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and on uh, Twitter, X, Come On Now Pod. My voice is getting worse and worse as we get on. We, made so. it we, we, we gave Rudy a couple of days of off. He came out We're to, out of here. You came out tonight. What? You came out today. You played better than OG, so you had a little bit more in you in the tank. You made it through the whole after, game. And this is after I threw batting practice to my kids for an you hour. You made it through the whole game. You know? Oh, and I and I hit also, and I hit a homer off over the wall. Oh yeah, but but now every muscle in my upper body is hurting right now. Uh, oh man, I probably pulled an ab muscle or something. Oh man, you have no. They're abs. there somewhere. You have no abs. All right, man. All right, we're done. Have a good one, folks. Thank you for watching. Come on now, the podcast. Please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up to the minute updates. When we publish new content, you can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel.